on. Yes. Hi. Hello, everyone. We're on time. And of course, as always, if you've been here before, you know, the first question as ever is, can you hear me? I'm going to assume you can because I've been talking to our guest stuff for the night and she can hear me. So it must mean that the mic is working. So we're not here alone tonight. We also have with us Amanda. I'm going to pull her up. There Hi. you are. Hi. <laughs> We've been trying to do a stream for uh, for a while now behind the scenes. So finally, we're going to get to do this, which I'm very excited about. And as well. <laughs> we had a bit of a, a time deciding, you know, what's a pick because it's just so, so, so wide of a breadth of topics. <laughs> I feel like we both have that issue, though, where we're like, we were talking about this when we were like, what will we pick? And then we're like, I don't know. And they're like, I need a minute to think about it. And I wasn't even sure. I was like, I don't even know what to say. And then I was like, oh, I know. So when, when we are on my stream next time, mm -hmm. the thing came to me like a lightning bolt. And I don't know if you had the same experience, but based on what you picked, I'm going to guess that it was like, then all of a sudden you were like, oh yes, that's what we're doing. Yeah, definitely. Because I've wanted to talk about this one for a while, but it's the kind of issue where I feel like it's more fun to talk about with somebody else, <laughs> just to yes. bounce things off of. Because <laughs> it's it's yeah. a classic. I saw some people in chat already saying, like, isn't this like a, a seminal, like classic, important historical issue? And the answer to all of those so things important. is yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's also... Um, really interesting depending upon the when you read it why you read it all of those other things which we will get into so i put it in the thumb but i won't bury the lead i'll pull it up briefly so that the peeps can see that we're going to be talking about green lantern 85 and 86 and the infamous my ward a junkie cover <laughs> it's a classic <laughs> it's been done like you know, there's been homages to this and all of that good stuff with people recreating it. Yeah. And so before I do a little bit of the history and all of that, I want to ask you, uh, why do you think I picked this for us? <laughs> well, I think you picked this for us because we were talking about, um, we were, t I was talking about Green Lantern. <laughs> was what i initially thought i thought oh green lantern and then i was like oh this cover and then i was like oh it's this green lantern <laughs> hmm. but i that's what i thought initially because i said to you how much i really wanted to get into green lantern and how my main experience with it had been far sector and mm -hmm. how i love um lantern Moline. and uh and i was like i and i we were talking about hal and i was kind of like i just don't really understand why hal is cool and you were saying hal is cool like in these ways. And we were just talking about what Hal's been up to. So I thought, oh, maybe this is to like showcase the awesomeness of Hal Jordan initially. And then I mean, read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's partially, I mean, a little bit when you think about it through a certain lens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Matthew <laughs> Crowler, thank you very much. And has, of course, the first question, why would Hal Jordan do this? <laughs> <laughs> which uh it's yeah. something we always ask on um on these streams but in this case it's more a question of um why would ollie do this <laughs> which we will yes <laughs> i'm still asking to. myself that question i think i think unfortunately you know what i will say i'm just really happy that hal is actually along for the ride maybe you know what it is maybe you gave me this because you said next to green arrow you're going to look at Hal Jordan and you're going to say, what a great hero. <laughs> because I did say that as I read it. I thought, man, Hal Jordan is just such a stand up guy. Like he's just in here, like trying to help his, trying to help his friend Green Arrow, trying to help his friends Ward, trying to solve everybody's problems. And then Ollie's just Ollie. <laughs> Mission <know>? accomplished. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. It's very appreciated. Oh is this God. an intervention as Ben Chan? <laughs> ben, thank you very much. Hal's just so happy someone else is more of a mess than him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think so. so also, me... hello to everyone in chat, by the way. I yes. see you all saying hi and hi. <laughs> uh, 
I have all of Amanda's links and everything down below. So you can go check out her channel where she is posting daily and she's also streaming on Twitch. So if you want that consistency, you can have that in your life. So <laughs> I'm very tired, but we're doing it. <laughs> it's worth and it. Especially if you guys like uh, like movie content. I'm talking a lot about a, a lot about a lot of movies and shows and hopefully more comics. I really want to do like a Wolverine 50th video. Have you done anything mm. for Wolverine's 50th yet? No, I haven't, but yeah. I'm flirting with it. I'm flirting with doing one of the um, Wolverine like 90s series episodes just for fun, you know? Oh, why yeah. not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of gold in there. I, I, I read the first 50 issues um, on my exclusive community place we have a comic book club and we were reading through it mm -hmm. and uh i want to just recap like the first like 50 issues of that iconic series <laughs> so iconic also they have new figures i'm so excited oh anyway. nice yeah i wanted to do that with vigilante because vigilante has a really <gasps> concise art be so cool but then it was really depressing and i was like i don't know if i'm ready for like, this yeah right yeah vigilante is depressing you know what's weird to me that there's still i think so many people that don't realize that vigilante is from the comics like that saw peacemaker mm -hmm. and yeah. that are like oh that's cool they like made this character and i'm like no he was around <laughs> he was doing things <laughs> he was doing some things he that's was, he was punisher but with a story that ended by basically <laughs> Punisher, oh. but if Punisher stopped, you know? Yeah, Punisher, yeah. but if, like, the inevitable eventually happened. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, um, first I'll go through the titles of what we're reading and all of that good stuff. I had notes that I've written. So we're looking first at uh, Green Lantern 85, which was Snowbirds Don't Fly, which was written by Denny O'Neill with art by Neil Adams. And the year is 1971. And then we're also looking at the sequel, 86 they say it'll kill me but they won't say when which is just um I, I love that title i can't say anything but the first title is actually a drug reference because a snowbird is slang for somebody who's addicted to cocaine which is um so right they're, they're pushing it out okay. there already with the with the title really like look at this yes very much so the editor is julius swartz which I'm just mentioning because I'm doing a lot of Julius Schwartz stuff lately. I'm actually working on a whole video with like quotes from his book and stuff. It's been a cool. lot of fun. And so we're looking at the 1970s and specifically 1971, which is an important era for the comics code because it's the year that the comics code is revised. And we're going to get the slightly, slightly more relaxed uh, comics code. <laughs> and How exciting. Part of it is because of talking about drugs, but it's first forced by Marvel with the um, Harry Osborn and all the storylines that Stan Lee is doing, but that's because he was actually asked to do them. So he didn't just start doing them. He was asked to do those by the, um, actually by the health commission to try and raise awareness for like the, the issue affecting the youth. But the thing is, then the code wouldn't approve the story. So those first Marvel stories mm. had to run without the code seal of approval. And so then over at DC Comics, Carmine, Infant yeah, Carmine Infantino really didn't like that. And he was like, no, I don't want to run without the code. I don't want to get into it with the government again. Like, you know, like back in the Silver yeah, Age. It's like, <laughs> we already did that and it sucked hardcore. So it they ended up modifying the code itself. Which is, and then it's after that modification that you're going to see these stories come out. So, and they, these stories actually, like, they do buck the modified code a little bit. I've read the original code, but I will read the slightly modified addendum that they added for the narcotics. Which is, okay. uh, narcotics or drug addiction should not be presented except as a vicious habit. Narcotics or drug addiction yeah. or the illicit traffic and addiction producing narcotics or drugs shall not be shown or described if the presentation, A, tends in any manner to encourage, stimulate, or justify the use of narcotics or drugs, or B, stresses visually by text or dialogue their temporary attractive effects, or C, suggests that narcotics or drug habit can be quickly or easily broken, or D, shows or describes details of narcotics or drug procurement or the implements or devices used in taking narcotics or drugs or the taking of narcotics or drugs in any manner. 
or E, emphasizes the profits of the narcotics or drug traffic, or F, involves children who are shown knowingly to use traffic, to use or traffic in narcotics or drugs, or G, shows or implies a casual attitude towards the taking of narcotics or drugs, or H, emphasizes the taking of narcotics or drugs throughout or in a major part of the story and leaves the denouncement to the final panels. So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely, you know, getting a lot of all of that, I would say, in this story, because I'll tell you what, there's people having substances and there's not a lot of, there's no sympathy, I feel like, for these people. <laughs> they, But they skirted hard because, as you notice, like, we showed kids, we showed them using it, did. we did show That's the true. implements. and But it's very they, condemned, so I feel yes. like that's how you get around it, right? Yeah, I feel like because I guess they does. were so negative the about it, they were able yeah. to like be like, but we showed it. And also because, I mean, they were being asked to tackle the, top, the topic. So it's kind of like, well, we can't talk about it if we can't, you know, talk about it. Show like, we any need to, of it. We need to show it so that we can show kids like, this is what will happen to you. Yeah, Everything exactly. is terrible. Don't don't do it. Not don't even think about it. <laughs> exactly. About yeah. You don't want to end up like like Speedy or act more accurately like Speedy's friends. You don't want to end up like really, Speedy's yeah. friends because Yeah. <laughs> Speedy actually I think Speedy broke the one of these codes. I think it was C about it being easily broken. But um uh yeah, I mean, I feel like he he suffered, but it was I will say when we get to the end of the story, I was like is that how that works? Cuz I don't <laughs> think that's how that works, but I guess this is the end of the story, so we got to wrap it up, everyone. You know, so the whole ending. I can't wait to talk about the ending. Of oh, the my story, God. The actually. ending. I have the notes about is, the ending because like the I ending have so is many just, thoughts. I just want my thoughts, especially the last panel. The last panel. Every the last, time I get to it. The last panel is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my God. But so this era um, began. I have more notes <laughs> with issue 76 for okay. Green Lantern. And it was an attempt to revitalize the sales that were desperately flagging. And so they were like, let's put these two together. Let's try a different direction. And while it's acclaimed, even for the time, it doesn't boost the sales. So it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, but it is an interesting time period. And we this comes together because they're green. That's what I want to know. I feel like they did because it's like just that's easier. what happened. You yeah. know, <laughs> just match the like greens. Nothing else that these characters really have in common other than they're both male superheroes, but like most superheroes could, you know, <laughs> a lot of superheroes could say that. Well, I mean, uh, if that was the case, then they could have teamed them up with someone who's actually friends with them, like the Flash or like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it feels like, like they're like this green guy and this green guy. And I'm like, this is just because they're both like got green in their name <laughs> well it's like they are meant to be friends and in all fairness there are moments in these issues where you see that but yeah. it's largely the way that the socio-political commentary is handled where that falls apart for all of this friend because like i've read hard traveling heroes so many times <laughs> and every time it's just uh what it is is what it is for me and this is why i wanted to give it to you because i needed somebody else's opinion because and we're going to put the time period in a box because, of course, it's a time period. It's a bit of a PSA style comic. So some of it is going to be on the nose. The way but, everyone talks in this is like the 1970s. Like I was like, yes. we're really in the 1970s right now. But I'm this is it. described as like a nuanced, like a nuanced type of thing. And I just. A nuanced? And I just do not feel that way. So, <laughs> but. Hmm. interesting nuance but i'm gonna interest i'm gonna pull it up and so we can uh look at it so obviously we're gonna be starting with 85 let me try yeah. and make the kindle logos go away as best i can <laughs> but so i have to say it is a great cover like this is just it gets your attention you want to know <laughs> Is I mean, and the same person is doing the cover that's doing the interiors, right? Like, we yes, don't this have is Neil Adams. Artists. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will also say that like Neil Adams, just like attention to detail on like facial expressions, and even just the way panels are broken down as we go through mm -hmm. both issues and the way that people are fighting each other and stuff like that. Like, it just pops. Like, mm -hmm. it's so clean. And just that you can't, this face that Ollie is, has is like, 
this is gonna haunt you forever if you picked up this cover in like 1971 <laughs> it's still it's still haunting now like every it now is. and again they'll they'll do redraws or alternate versions i'm like we don't need to like this cover is fantastic and conveys everything it needs to and also we must note we have drug paraphernalia on the cover so like that's that's i like crazy you know, especially after reading all those adjustments to the code. So, like, really, this is the era where the code starts to lose its its grip yeah. after having it for so long. This is really, you can start to see the decline of that. And you can see DC attacks youth's the greatest The tragic problem. decline Drug. of the code. <laughs> I have to go yeah. over here. Thank you, Ozzy Dragoon, very much. Hard traveling vid when? Well, I mean, this is the start. This, in a way, is a hard traveling vid. <laughs> So right away, they want you to know that this is a big deal. And I, I do like that they're talking about how controversial the story even is for the time and the opening, like, crawl from the start, from the creators right up top here, yeah. where they're just talking about how this is controversial. Like, let me look over at it. There will be those who argue that such events have no place in entertainment. So, like, we... <laughs> the part where they're like, but we don't think so because we've seen these noble creatures, human <laughs> beings, wrecked, made less than animals, plunged into the hells of agonies. I was like, wow, the <laughs> hells of agonies. Woo. This is no. their protest. This is their protest. No this more is... hells of agonies. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to make the youth not do drugs. They're going to read this and they're going to rethink everything. So... <laughs> I rethought a lot of things reading it. So to be fair, maybe they have, maybe they did something right. I don't know. I was rethinking. I don't know if I was rethinking drugs, but I was rethinking things in my life. So I'll do a brief <laughs> synopsis of this issue and then we'll get into breaking it down a little okay. bit. So 85, where we start off is we have Ollie and he's not in the best place. He's on the outs with like Dinah and it's just, he's walking the streets and he gets mugged by these kids who are on drugs and they, they want his money. And it's actually a really good fight. And he gets shot with an arrow that he's able to recognize as one of his own design. And so that sends him on a hunt for like, how did this arrow get in him? What's going on? What does it have to do with Speedy? And so they start to look into the problem of like youth street drugs. Also, Speedy has been gone for a month. Let's And start. Ollie does not care. <laughs> does not care. <laughs> He's like, it might be Speedy because I haven't seen him in a month. It's like, okay. It's cool. yeah, the lack of care that he demonstrates towards like Roy as a ward and a person he's supposed to be like care about and be invested in is astonishing. literally your job to take care of him. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen him in a month, don't know where Look, he is. He's doing things, and in this run, that means lecturing Hal while they travel around the country, which Speedy calls him out for later. He's like, You weren't even here, and I'm like, No, he wasn't. <laughs> he really wasn't. Like, my god. So I have to say, I do like the the this, the fights are so good. Like they're really they're really good. They really suck you in. Although I have to say, this inking because this is a digital recolor, um, it is making the youths look like they've aged a good twenty years. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got some lines on them. I really like this panel where he gets shot with his own arrow. Like again, just the expressions on the faces. I was like actually shocked when I read it. Because mm -hmm. because it's like Oliver Queen. And I'm mm -hmm. like, did he just get... And especially when he... The, the part... You know what I really love? I feel like they play the beats of the fight so... In a, in a way where like you almost... You don't know what's coming next. But mm -hmm. then the pacing of it is so good. Like this part at the beginning when you know he sees that they have a crossbow and he like mm -hmm. literally dismisses it or like right before he gets shot he says yeah he says with that relic forget it somehow mm -hmm. i can't bring myself to be scared of a crossbow he's like a crossbow is ridiculous and then he's immediately <laughs> shot by it and you're like i was not expecting that to happen i literally thought he was gonna i mean especially because i'm reading it i'm like scrolling through it yeah so i'm like scrolling and i'm like oh that's oh my gosh <laughs> very shocking it like and it what that's one of the things that's good about this arc is that there are genuine stakes in it like even yeah. when it's preaching which is for the most of it but it does like things happen to them like you do have to worry about them and it's it's interesting from that perspective 
it does make you care about like what's going on. Thank yeah. you very much, Imprint Jones. It is appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also Dragoon, thank you. Oh, Ollie couldn't focus on where Roy was. He had to yell at Hal for that month. <laughs> he was swamped. <laughs> It's very, yep. it's very true. It's very true. Uh, you know, when you have lady problems, it's hard to just focus on anything else. That's uh, that's just life. We've Ollie, all been there. Ollie's really weird and possessive about Black Canary in this arc. I always think about a few issues in earlier. this arc. Well, I mean, especially in this arc, like there's one where it looks like she's fallen in love with some other guy. And she's gone off with him. And Hal is like, hey, she's her own woman. Like, she can do what she wants. And only punches him in the face. I'm just like, oh, my God. It's like, um, there's a lot of punching in the face that I feel like. This is, that's what friendship is. A friendship it is. is. How many times, Sasha, have we punched each other in the <laughs> face? Many times. I mean, are you friends if you haven't punched each other in the face? You're I don't not. think so. <laughs> not real it's friends. <laughs> Um, I also like the part of the, this first fight where this woman tries to like, tries to get involved in this because he's been shot with an yes. arrow. And I love how her like boyfriend or whatever is like, it's not smart to get involved, Mary. <laughs> Keep to yourself, Mary. You'll be next. I was like, I was like, I, I appreciate that. Like, this is actually one of like the more subtle parts of it where you actually show like how people react when they just live in an area where, you know, this kind of stuff is people just get going shot with down. arrows. Yeah. They're just like, he's like, look, it's, it's a tough city. I've seen it all. <laughs> Crossbows also, are the real problem of the youth. So <laughs> also Mary's outfit is also like amazing. I love, this is the thing. I don't read a lot of seventies comics and every time mm -hmm. I go in, I'm always just like, 70s and 80s there's so many fashion moments that i'm just like what is this we're having a fashion moment i think people I, don't think it happened as much as it does now but it happened all the time no i love it and like it's like going through old lois lanes and stuff that's part of what i'm doing sometimes i'm just like oh yeah. wow like look at look at these look outfits this. like <laughs> she looks so good also all this <laughs> other stuff happening but <laughs> <laughs> but also these outfits <laughs> yeah so at this point, he calls Hal, and this is one of the better friendship moments where, like, Hal's like, oh, my God, like, he's clearly in trouble. I'm going to go down like a bro and help him out. And they start investigating. And just this entire issue, like, Ollie's very kind of self-focused. Like, it's it's all about Ollie and, like, his problems. And even when he's telling Hal about you know like drugs and like it's the problem of our times he's doing it from like a very kind of like those bums need to just not be doing drugs he's like i'm really bothered by this like <laughs> we need to stop this because it's disgusting and i'm disgusted by it i know that's the weird thing too is here's the thing that i really appreciate about hal here is that even though ollie seems very like focused on his own thing yeah hal is like very concerned about him like even when ollie is just focused on his own mission mm -hmm. i was like i'm really worried like about my friend like i can tell that he's like shaken like when he comes back and he like he's calling him from the hospital mm -hmm. and he's like hey you know it i i'm i got shot and like i need the help with this thing can you meet me at a spot i was like man i'm really worried like <laughs> I'm really worried about Ollie. Is he going to be okay? <laughs> what this, happened? This arc is using Hal the way it does for this entire run, which is that Hal is supposed to be off in space. So like they play it like he's just completely unaware of, you know, some of the th the problems yeah. that are occurring in this. It works better in this drugs, case than what some are of these? the other times. I've never heard of them. <laughs> the youth on drugs? Shocking. But in this case, it works a bit better. It's one of the less awkward instances of it. It's better than when they pretend he didn't know what racism was in like the first front of this, which was so awkward. Oh, but we were, I was talking, I was talking about that the other day. I was like, oh boy. But like this, what? this is better. And like for them bouncing off of each other. And I think also because this and I will admit my bias here. For the most of this run, it presents it like Ollie right, Hal wrong. Despite the idea that it's supposed to be nuanced and bouncing ideas off of each other. That's not actually what happens when you read it. And this one, even though it's very pointed and stuff, is the closest it gets to like being a bit more balanced. At least yeah. in my opinion. Oh my god, this kid's face. It's so good. <laughs> 
the faces are so good throughout. Oh my gosh, desperation. It's so good. Like it really it really does sell it. It really really does. I mean, I definitely think if we didn't have this art, I don't know if this story would be You don't think it would have been able to pull it off if it had I mean, different... I definitely don't think it would be as iconic as it is, you know what I mean? Like it's withstood the test of time and I think a huge part of that is the art with mm -hmm. the story. I definitely think so. And I do also think it is the fact that it is like some of the first attempts at like really overtly tackling this. And I do appreciate scenes like this one where you, even though it is them just, you know, basically being like, this is why I got on drugs, man. And like, this is my backstory. I, I appreciate that it took the time to try and give like societal rationality Humanity to these people. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's a good contrast with Ollie, who's just like, whatever, suck it up. I don't need to do drugs. Like, <laughs> so everything's Yeah, Ollie's problems. just like, everyone's got problems. Like, you shouldn't do that because it's, I don't understand it. And then these people are basically like, yeah, but like, I, I have a reasoning, you know? And it's, I mean, it's not super deep, but it's, makes you feel like, oh, these are characters. They're not just like, mm -hmm. people were just, that are just nameless characters that were here to just waste them. It feels like there's a bit more of an understanding of this topic than, you know, some of the other issues that they've tackled. And also the way that they did play anyone with it. Have relation to this topic? I have to know. I'm not sure. I like, I I'm know. really not sure. If it, because, like, they were going through all kinds of stuff with this. Like, you know, like, indigenous land rights and all of the other stuff that they were talking about during this right. run. Oh, huh. yeah, because Speedy, it does feel like it feels close to people sometimes. It does. Like, just the way that, that it's, because it's so intense. My favorite part about this, even though it is, as mentioned, clunky, is I feel like this is a great story for Speedy. I think they do a really good job with Speedy in this, with characterizing his rationale and just with his relationship or lack thereof with Ollie. and what that's done to him i think that's really well presented i think it's like actually holding ollie accountable in a lot of ways which feels i mean i hate to quote green arrow on it but like <laughs> he's a man now like it really is this kind of like speedy like like realizing like a lot of the stuff in his life like a lot of the issues in his life that he actually like wants to be better and like just seeing, I think, things for how they are, as opposed to, you know, just being this this pal of Green Arrows that's like, oh, I'll just do what Green Arrow says. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It also breaks further outside the mold of the like Batman, Robin, Green Arrow, Speedy. Like it splits them and makes them feel more distinct different. by having them have yeah. such different relationships with their wards, which I also appreciate from an overall DC lore standpoint. A hundred percent. 100%. It's a very different relationship. I mean, I also feel like with Batman, if you're gone for like two seconds, Batman better know where you are. You know what I mean? Like, There's like a chip in your skin, you know? <laughs> yeah. like... He'll be like, I noticed that you didn't like thoroughly wash your hands today. <laughs> He's like taking notes of everything. I know it'd be impressive if one of them managed to be on drugs because <laughs> I know Batman would have had to know. He'd be like, actually, that was part of my contingency plan. I know I'm training drugs. you to get used to it. Like a little <laughs> <laughs> building up an immunity to the poison. Thank you very much, Matthew. Bet you seven Ollie doesn't even know what Will is. That is a Heroes in Crisis joke, and I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. So they end up going and trying to track the drugs to the source, which is very reckless, just grabbing some kids who are on Especially English. when Green Arrow's arm is in his sling. And he even acknowledges, he's like, I'm going to be useless. So that's why Green Lantern's coming with me. Anyways, I'm going to go put myself in immediate danger with Green Lantern. So hopefully he can just like superhero for both of us. Like, I'm like, why I, would you do that? The one thing I also really like is that he has such blinders on that he doesn't even contemplate why Speedy is there. He's just like, good job tracking them, Speedy. That's clearly why you were here, right? I'm just like, oh, dear. <laughs> Speedy's like, uh, sure. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah. I have to say this, this next sequence is actually really, really dark. And I'd forgotten how dark it was and how much it affected me the first time that I read it. 
which was where they forced them to take drugs. And I'd like, I'd forgotten that that happened, honestly. I was like, I'm sorry, what's happening now? Like, also, wait, no, that has to break some comics code. Does that break something? I guess I mean, it's bad. It was bad. But I mean, really again, it's it's pushing it pretty hard. Like, we got needles in the air. We got drugs in baggies. Like, we're really, like, just right up against the edge of, of what they can do. I think the only way that it really was like, okay, but this is like, it's really bad because I mean, I guess the whole point of them, you know, being, you know, doped up is the idea that that's how shocking it is. Like it's supposed to shock us mm -hmm. and it does that job. So I, I feel like maybe like the comics code was like, yeah, I mean, this is obviously terrifying and that's the whole point. Exactly. It's like. <laughs> I was like, this is an invasion of so many things. I. <laughs> do not like this wow <laughs> this okay this is my favorite um panel of Ooh. the entire thing like the way that hal's visions manifest while he's on on drugs and i just think that that's just an, such an interesting concept and something yeah. i would love to see explored more or just like the idea Hal on of drugs no well i mean that <laughs> happens later when he does shrooms by accident i meant more oh, yeah. <laughs> I meant more like just what when your mind is altered and the ring mm. and what like what it looks like when you're using the ring or what it feels like or what it becomes mm -hmm. when your mind is tripping out. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's pretty I cool. Mean, I, this whole story is actually really trippy. Like for something that's also supposed to be about like, don't do drugs. I'm like, it's pretty trippy. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, how did Speedy get there so fast? Speedy followed them. Right <gasps> this was my question. I, I had to read that like four times. <laughs> I was so confused. There's another part that I had to reread a few times, but I think I was just dumb. I'll bring it up when we get there. But yeah. Also, for a second, I was also just like, how did he even know where to go? But then I was like, oh, he probably knew because like he's been there before. Exactly. So that makes sense. <laughs> but like they flew there. They did. <laughs> with a green lantern. So you're telling me that speed like that's got to be a crazy cab he got in or something. No, he left right after. Like, he was right behind. Them. Because also, he seemed pretty, like, just his facial expressions, he seemed pretty cool to sit it out. Mm -hmm. So it was very surprising when he showed up to the point that I didn't even know at first that it was Speedy. I had to, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, is that Speedy? No, that doesn't make sense. I just thought it was like some random passerby who was like, my hero is on drugs. <laughs> Yeah, but then we kept going and I thought, no, that definitely looks like Speedy. And then I went back to check what he looked like, what he was wearing in the issue. And then I was like, yeah, no, that is him. And then I went back to just be like, oh, okay, was he like with them? And then I was like, no, he wasn't with them. And so then I had to go back to read like through the what's even happening. And I'm like, but he was told to stay. No, he was told to stay. <laughs> it was a whole process. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> Speedy? I mean, that's why we call him Speedy. He's so Exactly. <laughs> so quick it's his secret meta powers that he doesn't get to use because he's you know rocking the green arrow merch yeah he's like look really i belong with the flash but we don't talk about that so it's a, it's a secret he just used his speedster powers and ran over there i guess this okay this this section where speedy tries to explain why somebody would do drugs i it actually, it really, it really touches me, like, because it's so obvious, like, how neglected and just left behind yeah. he's been. And the fact that just our wishes right over all his head is, like, so painful. It's, like, just really, like, just heartbreaking. Like, I really just feel bad for him. And also, you know what it is? I think it connects with me in a way of, like, have you ever tried to talk to like an authority figure or like a parent or something and you're trying to explain to them something about yourself that you're not like comfortable mm -hmm. maybe saying out loud yet about yourself so you try to do it through like well i heard like this person like we all did that i think as kids or at least i've definitely done that when i was like figuring out who i was even as a person or what i wanted in life and trying to like share something with my parents maybe i wasn't like fully proud of yet or like wasn't ready to say mm -hmm. and so when he's saying this whole story i'm like oh and then especially when just oliver just doesn't get it mm -hmm. 
And when he's shocked when he comes back, I was like, and then he he's told mad you. at him. I'm like, he told you, you weren't <laughs> listening. Like, that's how checked out you are. Like, hello. It's for me, when I read this, what I read it as, like, and I've always read it as this, is that he's afraid of him. Like, cause I'm like, he doesn't want to tell him because there's a part of him that's afraid of him. And honestly, I mean, just for good reason, I was going to say like his honestly. reaction to it, like just reinforce that for me, because I'm like, that was quite like, I can understand mad, disappointed, like, you know, all of those things, but the reaction it's, is yeah i mean and i think that's why a lot of us do that though right like that's why you tell mm -hmm. it's it's just such a relatable experience like this kid trying to confess something to someone that they like really want to tell them but they're scared to tell them because they're scared of being judged or they're scared someone's gonna like blow up and mm -hmm. then when you see it happen it's like oh my god and then i just think to myself this is a hero let's think about this this is a superhero. I, okay, imagine if this was like the first full green arrow thing you read, which it was for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine yeah. if like, and people recommended it to you with the, like, you will come out of this loving green arrow. And I was just like, this is an experience. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I came out of it appreciating green arrow as a character, but not liking him as a character and finding him to be very hypocritical which was interesting and it made him an interesting character to read but not one that i liked which are two I mean, different he's very things. human so i guess maybe yes. what people like about it is that this really does show that like oliver queen is a he is a character that has depth like he is just a guy and there's something that's like kind of cool about that but it's like just no just no <laughs> i appreciate it but the thing is also if you've read from 76 up to this which like i had at that point it comes on the heels of every issue being like he's in the right he's in the right he's in the right and it's like th then this issue just comes around and backslaps you by being like he's actually self-righteous and all so i'm like yes i i agree but also you could spend all those issues trying to be like you know trying to examine some of that like why don't we just unpack that a little bit more yeah i haven't read the previous issues so I don't know what that buildup is like, but having it's just read this, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I've read some other Green Arrow stuff mm. here and there, like not like a long, like I haven't read like a whole run or anything, but I will say that people, I mean, I haven't watched Arrow. Mm. Um, I've seen parts of it and I've watched yeah. a lot of The Flash and I've seen Green Arrow show up in that. But when people talk to me about how much they love Green Arrow, I'm like, thinking of these like almost two versions in my mind that I know are the same person, but I'm like, there's the comic book version that I've read that I'm like, this guy's like kind of a problem. And then there's like the one that everyone puts above everything that's from the show. But then when I watch the show, because I've read some of the comics, I yeah. see the parts that I'm like, but that's kind of a problem though, isn't it? <laughs> like I like uh, at least the first few seasons of Arrow and then like the rest I enjoy for different reasons. But like I did mm. enjoy CW Arrow and I have no shame in saying that out loud. You know what? There's, you know, some of the CW is good. And I think my main issue with it is that it runs a bit long. That is the tragic part of it. It's like too much. But yeah, I mean, CW's CW is all right. I haven't it can, watched it. It has its things. moments. <laughs> But then I saw Batwoman and I was like, mm, I don't know about this. That's, uh, <laughs> that was a different story. Uh, so how did you feel after you finished 85? What were your thoughts like as you were gearing up for 86? Yeah, so I finished 85 and I was thinking like, oh, my goodness like where are we going next because i just think this revelation that it finishes on mm -hmm. it which i knew was coming because it's the cover it's on the cover <laughs> except that you know you know green lantern isn't here but he has to be on the cover because he it's his he's book. sharing <laughs> yeah he's sharing the book right now so um i i personally was just like like, where do we even go from here? I think the other thing that's interesting about this whole story is that it all kind of starts with like an arrow. And then it's like, where's this arrow from? And then we kind of figure that out. And now it's becoming more of like soap opera, like, you know, my ward is using drugs. And now I'm like, now it's kind of like a family drama. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how that would 
get back how we get back to like superhero fight and crime mm -hmm. uh and i kind of expected what happened next <laughs> but it was a lot more intense than i think what i thought was gonna happen i mean i yeah. know i know the story of it mm -hmm. but there's one thing to know the story and it's one thing to read the panels it's like that's oof. that's the thing because like the second half i would argue has some of the dialogue that hits really hard when yeah. they're discussing their relationship so let's get past this not quite as not quite as iconic cover and i'm sorry hal makes me laugh in the back of this cover it's just his really dramatic no in no. the background there more deadly than i the have Adam to be Bomb. on this cover <laughs> uh so of course we go right into it yeah with the just it's the way they frame it too. The way he's just coming at you like you're the person who got slapped. Like that was a choice to frame it that way. Also, the fact that like the title is right above them. How do you feel about that? <laughs> like I know it's got to be on this page, <laughs> but just the way even the letters are <laughs> like it makes it sound like he's going to murder him. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a horror. Like I feel like I'm about to read a horror comic now. That's what we're about to jump into. Green Arrow is a predator. He's going to, <laughs> he's like basically trying to murder Speedy for some reason. Like clearly we see the, the, the band, the, the tourniquet on him. Yes. Like clearly drugs are involved, but it's like, even just the faces here, like, gosh, they really make Green Arrow look like a monster. It, like if and the thing is like what Roy is saying here like it's so uncomfortable to read like he's saying go ahead hit me if it'll make you feel better and it's just it's so uncomfortable just all of so, it so last the end of the last issue and the beginning of this issue really I said this to you before we jumped on <laughs> but like what like does Speedy is he kind of in love with Green Arrow because I feel like there's the way that he talks about him and the way he talks to him at times i'm like dude like is green arrow your whole life that's it that's all you have is green arrow like maybe like go out and meet some other people i don't know like i think you need friends like i'm worried about you it's like the whole because the mentorship is presented as so deeply important to roy and it just contrasts with what you read from Ollie, who's like, what was he doing? I haven't even seen him for a month. Like, where is he? I don't know. And it's just, the, the thing is, there's something about the phrase, like, go ahead and hit me. Like, in my head, even though I, I haven't seen it before or anything like that, it was like, has he hit him before? Like, that was instantly, like, what my mind right? flashed to, you know? It, it definitely seems that way, the way it's written. Like, like it's, it's just, you know, and you do Like, he's bad. expecting it. Like yeah. you, that's what that's what makes you think. Wait a minute! If you're expecting it, like why are you expecting it? That's my thing. And it's like the Titans aren't involved in this. I mean, it, it might have been nice to have a, a reference, you know, to them. I understand why they don't because it makes it feel a lot more isolating for well, him. Well, it's about these two characters and exactly. their relationship, so I get it. But it's like I'm just like the Titans need to like save you. Like they need to come <laughs> in and like thank goodness Green Lantern is here. Thank I goodness. know because this last panel, I actually really like it a lot. It's a very humanizing one for Green Arrow, even though it's it, it's negative humanization. But it's like it's good. Like you know, like was it me? Did I somehow fail the kid? It's like it's all about him. He's like, is it somehow? My and then he has to abandon him there on the floor. Like just, just I you know? this last panel. I like how you're like it gives us humanity. Whereas my reaction to reading this last panel was like what is even happening i was like ollie please like i need you to just for a second just for a second could you be a human being that's what i was thinking because i thought he says you know uh but he shouldn't need attention at his age no i'm innocent of blame i've always taught him to be strong independent to hang tough i was like um you you haven't seen him for a month I don't think you've taught him very much in the last month. You haven't, you don't even know where he is. See, it's like, this is where me coming from reading, I was like, finally, I was like, we're finally acknowledging that the man is flawed. Like, I was just like a right. hallelujah, like, oh my God. I mean, it's it is happening. a very flawed, like, panel, for sure. 
for sure. Ben Chan, thank you very much. All he should have taken after Batman and given a good Papa Spank <laughs> problem. <laughs> hey, it's quiet or Papa Spank. You've got to add the quiet or it's not complete. What? Oh, it's yeah. not the silver age. We can't just threaten to spank people all the time anymore. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we've moved past that. So all so in this issue, basically we have the two competing plots, which is that we have Ollie is trying to work through this. And the way he does is he's going to go He-Man out and beat up the the drug dealers and the people who got Speedy on drugs because it's totes their fault and has nothing to do with him. And then we also are going to have Hal actually helping, you know, Speedy through it. <laughs> and But yeah. mostly we're going to have Ollie going out and getting into trouble because he's not handling it in any kind of like proper proper way also i feel like this is the issue where they had to put all the stuff to make sure that they could get it past the code because we have an od on panel here and i feel mm -hmm. like that's there so that we can be like you see it is bad like we're showing it but it's also it's really very bad. quick though it is it also is very quick. quick but it does get this next page that i loved which is like my favorite page in this entire story which oh is it the next one yeah is it this, this one, one the uh, the overdose <laughs> yeah it's like Oh, there's so much emotion. And I also, I'm a big fan of when we like lose the background of something because it's mm -hmm. all about more what's like happening with the, the foreground. characters. Yeah. And in the emotion. So it's like, where did the background go? We don't need it. It's just colors. But also I love how weirdly psychedelic it is. Like mm -hmm. this sort of contrast of it being so psychedelic, but it's so tragic really just makes you feel like, oh, drugs are really bad like i just I, think it's a cool image i love the perspective on this just a lot of the perspectives in the, these issues like they feel like they're coming out the page at you it's like it's 3d <laughs> but, but i appreciate 70s 3d <laughs> yeah. yeah but the perspective really does add to it gm jonesy says titans were broken up at this time see <laughs> you had no, no one, one. <laughs> except no ollie one. who's not even there no wonder he's so obsessive and he's literally like i you know uh, you're hanging around with this cool guy but then that cool guy maybe doesn't have time for you anymore steven gill says i thought this was the first story printed without the comics code approval no it wasn't the marvel one didn't get uh, approval but then it retroactively got it and they put it on afterwards so it has yeah. the seal like now but this, this one next has the seal yes sure. Because he wouldn't, like, Infantino wouldn't work on any more drug stories until they sorted out the code. Because they'd done a Dead Man one before that, but he was like, we're not, no Silver Age 2.0. Like, none of that <laughs> happening again. Yeah. But so this, this is a great issue for Hal, like, because he cares. Look at him here, caring, actually worrying about, like, hey, Speedy seemed, like, not okay. <laughs> Look at him taking off his shirt, putting on his <laughs> uniform. <laughs> Technically means he's naked. <laughs> uh, that's very true. He's not wearing it I, underneath. <laughs> I mean, I always, yeah. I mean, I always think about that with Green Lanterns because, like, their suits are constructs, right? Like, you make your suit. Most right. of the time, they show it like you make your suit, which is always something that's concerned me. I'm like, you should be wearing something because, like, that's constant will. Like your ring falls off or something. Or I know you get distracted. Like you don't even know what will is anymore. Like <laughs> I forgot what will is. Also, you know what would be really cool actually if your their their minds were altered and then because mm. they make their suits, like it changed like what their suit looked like and it was all like weird. Oh, that would be cool. But yeah, I I always think about that. And when I saw this page, I was like, there he is, take it <laughs> off his shirt to maybe be naked. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it is a suit. But we don't see him put it on. It's, it's not true. on We're, we're missing stuff. That's not what's important. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's important is he's he's transformed and he's going to get out there and, and help his friends. Because that's what he does. That's his whole thing in it's this like, story. I do like the action portions of the Green Arrow segments of this story because like this one despite having some very strong character moments also has just a lot of action beats where that's not the focus like there are decent sections of this issue where it's just like now we're fighting like underling drugs then the actual drug lord who i did appreciate the connection that they made with the actual drug lord later on like it got Ooh, kind of i like... just loved everything with the actual drug lord yeah. i was like this is actually really interesting also can we just acknowledge so in this issue 
-hmm. it seems like based on the fact that Hal just like gets a feeling that Speedy and then he like flies off. Like, so he's more in tune with what's going on with Speedy than Green Arrow is. Is that kind of what's being implied here? Yes. <sighs> yes. And also like, who did they bring him to? Like Dinah. So just like, where is Ollie in Speedy's <laughs> life at this point? Green Arrow is so checked out. And the fact that he also, I mean, we'll get to this at the end, but I have a lot of feelings about this whole debacle that this happens. This is one of them. my favorite panels. The, uh, like, the framing inside of, like, Hal's head. <laughs> oh, so cool. I'm a sucker for, like, a cool panel layout. Like, I love a cool panel layout. So the idea here would be that, is this, like, all happening? Like, is do you think Ollie's thinking about this right now? I just, I like, I honestly don't know why they framed this in Hal's head. Like every time I look at it and I think about it, I'm like, cause I know it's really happening. Like, why did we frame this inside of his head? <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's in Hal's head because he's thinking about like where he's going to find Speedy. So the idea is like, he's thinking of going there and then he does go there. Oh, so if we were filming it, it would be one of those, like, when they discuss a plan, and then the plan is also playing at the same time. At the same time. <laughs> yeah, and you're really, he's like, I'm gonna go to Chinatown, and I'm gonna look in that old attic that sometimes Speedy goes in. Also, is there a point in this where they found Speedy in an old attic? Did that actually happen? There, there's no editorial note, so I was like, is this real, or is this just a thing we say? I'm just loving that once again, Hal has conjured a couch construct, which is just <laughs> a recurring thing for him, which I always draws. You want to be comfortable, especially. It's, it's very like, true. Like whatever small comforts he can provide. Are... I just love in general Hal's constructs. It's like, dude, you could make anything. And he's like, I'm going to make a couch. <laughs> like, okay. My favorite couch construct is from the end of the new 52 era where he's chilling with Batman and Batman's sitting in the, I will never leave this chair. Like that he's in the Mets, the Mets chair and yeah. then Hal's sitting beside him but he also conjured up some potato chips like construct potato chips beside him for no reason <laughs> and I'm like you can't eat those why are they there it's like the recent panels that I posted where Kyle has the construct coffee cups but that like actual coffee <laughs> it's like and then you were like so he had to bring like he had to bring his coffee to space in a container just to not use the container so he could make his construct mug like how did it get there that was the other element of that is that they were in space so i was like this well, coffee's in space <laughs> maybe his coffee came he had a construct thermos and he came from earth out maybe. to space to it's think about space coffee <laughs> we're going to no. allow it <laughs> yeah you know, there's coffee in space. Everyone has said that many times. It's true. That's Janeway not... loves coffee. Like, you know, yeah. coffee is yeah. important. <laughs> That's true. He just called Janeway up. He was like, look, we're going to do a little crossover. Me, Star Trek, get in here. Get me some coffee. We're doing another one. Let's go. Don't worry. I have my own mug. I made it. It's a construct. <laughs> just pour it in there. <laughs> Matthew, thank you very much. Yes, remember Hal for the couches he constructed and the planes he flew. Never forget. <laughs> Oh man! Oh my goodness! And the couches he flew that yes, were his constructs that's true. <laughs> in this case. We have her original hair color here, which I always appreciate. It freaked me out. <laughs> I forgot, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that is what that is." What this she is looks from like. the wig life days. Yeah, the, the, yep, the wig life, the, the impractical wig life days that I still appreciate because honestly, dying it, I get it because someone could yank your wig off your head but i always yeah. appreciate the um <laughs> the wig life i mean does anyway. she dye her hair now she doesn't wear a wig anymore i thought she, she dyes her hair 52 oh we've gone back to like dyeing it or in some she's just blonde now and i'm like oh, i miss the wig days <laughs> does but you know what black cat i think still wears a wig over at marvel doesn't she does she still have a wig oh maybe she dyes her hair too actually she also used to have a wig so many of them had wigs. Like, Sue had a wig room. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace to all the wigs that we've lost. I know. Why is no one wearing wigs? People wear wigs all the time. It's so is... true. I'm like, now that they're, like, better and more varied than ever, I feel like we've lost the wigs, and it's a shame. <laughs> and, I mean, this is the time when you wouldn't really have to worry as much about your wig easily getting yanked off or you, like, doing a flip and it coming off. Like, they're pretty secure as well. It's true. They're way easier to lay down than That's... they used to be. <laughs> That's wild. Well, you know, if we get to write 
a story for DC or Marvel, we'll have to find a way to bring wigs back. Into oh God. The, we'll give one of those like meta. cringe interviews. Like the wigs are a super important part of continuity. <laughs> <laughs> We as women think that wigs are very important, <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that was in our story. Oh my god, <laughs> people love that. Uh, people like this is what happens when women write <laughs> wigs. <laughs> the suit takes will to make. So lots of when fighting a full power, Green Lanterns should be naked. <laughs> there you go. See, there you go. That definitely would mm -hmm. not be code approved. We could not have that. <laughs> That's why we don't show it. We just show him taking off the shirt, but we don't show him naked transform into the suit. It also means that you can get really cool transformation moments, though, where, like, like basically when Green Lanterns this, can be magical girls. They do like the Sailor Moon transformation. They, they've yeah. done that in yeah, um, First Flight. Like, yeah. um, he full-on does the Sailor Moon, like, spin and everything into being Green Lantern. Gorgeous. I'm just like, more of that, please. <laughs> So we have the um, the fight here where Green Arrow goes to confront the drug lords and we get our reveal that our actual lord is not only a rich man, but someone who works for a pharmaceutical company, which just okay. adds like <laughs> so many layers. Yes. But I have to say also the fact that Green Arrow gets here by getting a tip from someone. That he's like, I don't know if I can trust this person, but I'm going to trust this person. <laughs> and then he gets there and he's like, maybe I shouldn't have trusted this person. And I was like, what? Like, he's not even superheroing well, I feel like, in this story. <laughs> well, he's distracted. He's very angry. He's just, it's very, very angry. Important. His arm is injured. He can't, he has lady troubles. He can't focus. Look, he, it's very good that all of his sources are just very accurate. They just have good <laughs> intel. Oh, he's not used to having a bad source. They're pointing out in the chat, and they're right, that Batwoman has a wig. She wears the long version of oh, the red yes. hair while she has short hair. We still have that's... Batwoman. Thank goodness. That's one. <laughs> it's we go. true. I totally forgotten. Batwoman, the only hero to still wear wigs in 2024. <laughs> wow. I love this panel of him being pulled down by the anchor. And it's just so extreme and so intense. And I wasn't I wasn't anticipating it. Because I, was I like, mean, it's scary. The they face nearly murdered again. him. They yeah. nearly murdered him. And he nearly died because he was so reckless and didn't tell anybody where he was going or anything. Thank God that Hal or followed him. check his source or th think of any of these things. Yeah. Th well, like, how did Hal even... Oh, Hal knows because Speedy told him where to go. That's how he knows. Exactly. Yeah. Because Speedy was giving... Actually, there's a there's an interesting speech here from Speedy back when he's on the couch. And it's... But he's talking about... They're doing like the PSA about like why he does drugs. And I found this very interesting to read because I actually, I always like reading the rationales from the time period because I think they're always interesting to read from when you're coming at it from a different vantage point. So when he's here and he's like, I had the sermons thrown at me, but Lantern, your generation has been known to lie. Dig it. Because it's the 70s. You have told yeah. us war is fun. Skin color is important. A man's worth is the size of his bank account. All crocs. So why believe your drug rap? And you know what? That actually, that holds, a, it's not bad. Like in terms it's, I of. I mean, it's missing the part of like, also because I think they're fun. So I thought, <laughs> why not? You know, but you can't say that because of the comics code. So yes. it's like, without being able to say that part, I would say otherwise that is pretty true because I think that is, yeah, a lot of the reason why people, you know, get involved with substances because everyone does warn you. But then at the same time, it's like, well, do you trust the people that are warning you? And if you don't, it's true. Like it does, it does miss the, the it's fun element. Like they all do because everybody who gets into this because it's tragic, but yeah. I'm like people, the, the part about the code that says you can't make it attractive is what hinders this story. Cause I'm like, well, no one would do it if it wasn't attractive. Like if it was like, Oh, it's terrible and it's awful. And like you die sometimes. Like it's like, <laughs> it it's like, yeah, man, I know you die sometimes, <laughs> but like, I just don't like trust your, your what you say, you know, dig it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could die. So what? Like, it's just like, um, okay, well, that part, yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But the I, I do I do like this idea of like old age ideals and and how when you grow up, it makes you question like what people tell you and like if it's true. It's kind of a way of saying it without saying it, is the way I yeah, look at it. Because and because it is fairly well conveyed. Like for as on the nose as this issue is, I yes. think that for what it's trying to do, it's it's very readable, like despite being in like full PSA territory. And I feel like part of that is because the rest of the action around it is still 
paced like a normal comic book and presented in that way, like with the, the anchor near death but, and all of the other stuff that's going on. Like it still, it still feels like a cohesive story, even though this is still such a big prominent part of it. At least to me, it does. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I feel like it's very on the nose, but there's something that just like grounds it. It's because there there is truth to what people are saying still. And mm -hmm. like I said, I really think the art is like a huge part. Like even really on this is. couch, like these faces that we get even through this conversation. These and faces here of him withdrawing, like they're, they're horrible. very good. Like they rush through this, but they're still very powerful panels. Oh yeah. We rushed through that part, but I also just love just like, just the idea that Hal's just like, I don't know. I'll take you to Black Canary, I guess. Like, it's like she, here you she's, go, Dinah. She's equipped for this. Also, look, Dinah's he conjured like, some apes because DC loves a good ape. <laughs> we need some apes. Get quick. We need to sell these comics. We've already got to team up, get some apes in here. I know. Like, should we put thinking. the apes on the cover? No, that's too much. <laughs> we already got a lot we got the needle we got hal it's... we don't have room for it <laughs> they should have put the apes like like they're like a hallucination that would have been yes yeah that could have worked um yeah i also love these fans which look for some reason strangely phallic like why <laughs> why do they look like that i don't know for me the first time i read them i was like i just don't know why they're so deep they're almost like floral like it's like the inside of like of, i don't know why they're like why are they ridged why are they like a ridged tube like it's weird i don't think i'll seen i where is he getting these fans from in his mind i love the idea of like a green lantern conjuring really inaccurate you know <laughs> constructs they just don't look like the things they're supposed to he's like i'm really good at couches but what does a fan look like again Ugh. It's ridged. It's like a flower. <laughs> Fans are like flowers. Oh, yeah. ridged. <laughs> <laughs> Extra ridged for our cool. So, like, pleasure. the comic abandons um, Speedy for a little bit, just yeah. like Ollie, to finish off this um, drug arc, which is they need to, you know, they need to cap it off at the source, at least this one source, so that we can, you know, get through and show that drugs are bad and that we're stopping we them. Follow in Hooper, who is just such a such a cool character in this whole idea of him like having this party on the yacht and everyone thinks he's a super stand up guy because he's like a pharmaceutical man. And then we get to see what he's really up to. I just this whole part was just so cool. Like it was so good. I'm enjoying his ascot and Paisley shirt to work. It's great. Oh, it's <laughs> fantastic. The hair, the eyebrows. I just love this whole idea that like, oh, this man couldn't be evil. Well, look at him. He has a yacht and he owns a pharmaceutical. Look at this ascot. <laughs> like he looks so like he's up to no good. You know what I mean? I love it. No, and it does add like, again, they don't go into it too, too much. Like there are some interesting elements they introduce that add some layers of nuance to it like the idea of like the dissemination of drugs where they're coming from the class systems all kinds of things that they kind of hint at and like they flirt with it but they don't go there but it's still interesting that those elements are in the story to like to begin with because this could have just been like oh it's just like some you know person on the street but like the fact that they go this route does they could have made it someone more scuzzy first of all they could have made mm -hmm. it like oh it's these hoodlums on the street yeah pushing or they could have made it um, like, oh, it's coming from across the seas or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other directions we could have taken it in that I think would have been less interesting and just like more like, oh, well, that's like predictable. And also maybe not even, I think a lot of the times the way that we portray like these easy causes or whatever is not as accurate. Like this seems more weirdly more accurate to me that it's just this rich guy like, making drugs to make money it's like i don't know like it it ages i feel like this part ages like particularly well for it yeah although there's this weird okay every one of these issues has to have some kind of jab at hal in it at some point so like right. this one has this this odd line where they're where like you know he gets really angry because you know like this is the person the drugs and speedy and he's just beating the crap out of him and like this really artistic throw but <laughs> 
And all he has to like pull him back. He's like, oh my gosh, like, you know, you're going too hard. But then Hal has this weird line that's like, I never pretended to represent Justice Oliver. And he calls him his whole name. <laughs> That whole part felt so disjointed with everything else that's been happening with Hal in this story. Can I just say? Yeah. Because the whole time, yeah, Hal has been holding Ollie back, I feel like. And now in this one moment, for some reason, I don't know. I guess he didn't like that this guy, you know, was like ready to fight him and said he was part of the boxing club or whatever. I'm not sure what's happening. I, he didn't is... like his ass not bothered him. This is wearing more in line. was made him crazy. <laughs> This is more in line with like how they do how for like the rest of it. Like they'll have these moments where it's like he's just an out of control space cop. And so it's like this is just that moment for this issue, even yeah. though it doesn't really have anything to do with anything or fit in this particular scene. I never pretended to represent Justice Oliver, but I'm just, I, just, I don't Oliver. know. It's the fact that he calls him Oliver. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's a weird thing to say when you're literally a space cop. Like I never. I'm not about justice. I'm like, your whole thing is justice, though. Like, what are you talking about? I also feel like I know this guy's passing out, but I feel like you shouldn't be yelling all these names like right in front of him. Maybe don't say Oliver. Yeah, that's true. Like, we are wearing masks. We're trying to be undercover. But I mean, it's like if you put a little bit of effort in, still like, conscious. It's, it's not going to be too, too difficult if you really apply yourself to figuring it out, especially because his arms in a sling and all of that stuff. I mean, yeah, I feel like. I mean, I don't know. I'm always surprised that people don't know that Oliver Queen is Green Arrow. I feel like it's <laughs> kind of obvious, but I think the other thing... Okay, so this was also the part... That, that other page was the part where I got confused. Mm -hmm. You guys can tell me if I'm dumb. Okay, so what the, was it? Okay, so it's... Yeah, so at the bottom of the left page, he's okay. jumping out... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, good. I'm not... So I'm not You're dumb. You're not crazy, Anyone else no. in chat confused about that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, no, every time it's like, it's like, okay, so I'll put the mouse over it. So it's like, he's going, like he's opening the window. the window to like jump out the window. But then all of a sudden this is supposed to be, I think that Hal is pulling him back, but the That's way, but the way that it, it's like, he's standing, it looks like he's kicking it. That's just how it comes across. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was trying to close the windows or if he was trying to, yeah, like, kick the window because he was mad. But then I was like, how did he get back here? It just feels, you know what it is? It's like, there's a panel missing. I just want to, like, yeah. put a panel in between those two that's him grabbing him. Because I'm like, okay, I wasn't sure how he got back there. I thought, did he jump that way and then just, like, fall backwards or something? well and the next Green panel Lantern, does like, it too kicks the like, window up here because it's like on this panel he's falling back and blinking his head on this panel he's already mid-lunge like back towards hal so it's yeah, just the action make, here <laughs> flying around this room like this i it's very strange especially considering the previous issue and i think you know earlier on this issue as well the fights have been so succinct that mm -hmm. when i got to this part i was like am i dumb or and i had to read it like four times again i was like oh that's what's happening no got the it. first time i read this i definitely was like but but he kicked him and then i had to like go back and be like oh no he's he's throwing him backwards it's just <laughs> he's using his telekinesis to yes. throw him around this room i mean he could if he wanted to use his ring but you know he didn't feel like it. this was personal so yeah can green lanterns can they can they move things just with their mind i guess not in this not right. in this era not like this but era. in the silver age his ring could do anything it was terrifying like he could read minds he could force people to do things like it was just like oh. limitless but i mean except against yellow so i guess that made it okay <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, this guy's hair is also pretty yellow. Maybe that's why he was. Maybe that's why he was so it's mad. His, his also, shirt. why he ditched his ring. He was like, "I'm getting this guy myself." That's true. You know, look at that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I also love how he ditches his ring to grab him. I just think it's perfect. It's so perfect. The rich and mighty. Thank you very much. Snowflame should be Speedy's nemesis. Not anymore. <laughs> Speedy slash Red Arrow slash Arsenal has come a long way. <laughs> So we have here the funeral for, you know, his his friend, or at least the person he was hanging out with, who OD'd. And Ollie and his Hal are friend. here because they are and because they care. But what you see here is that Ollie hasn't checked in on Speedy. Because that's what this implies to me. Because he's like Speedy. Like he hasn't seen him for oh. however long this has been. Oh, I didn't even clock that. 
Because, like, when did I think he it's last... only been one night. I don't think he, it's he's been over it. <laughs> he, he recovered in one night. I think it's only been one night, but I don't know. It doesn't tell us how long it's been. So it could have been any amount of time. That's important to consider. It's only been a couple of days because it's the funeral. So usually those happen fairly quickly. Yeah, like, like within a week, organize I would say, at least, pretty right? Pretty fast, yeah. Yeah, so it can't be too long. And Still this, is strange. Okay, the, these lines infuriate me, where he's like, hello, Oliver, you might be interested in knowing that I beat my habit, I'm myself, and then Ollie says, good boy. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to bring up my point about what is happening with <laughs> Oliver and Roy I don't know, but it's good boy. Good and... boy. I was just like, oh my gosh. It's at the, at the at the best, it's condescending. At the worst, it's so many other things. Just so like <laughs> oh. I feel like uh the other thing that's interesting here is how when uh he comes in, he he says, I'm myself. Like yes. That is, that's where they cross the line for me. Like, this was very heavy handed. I expected it to be. Yeah. I'm myself. I was like, well, you were never not yourself. Good <laughs> Lord. That's quite a statement to make. As though drugs make you an entirely different person. No, like, anybody wow. who's on any drug, like, ever. <laughs> also, we got to say, for someone that, you know, was kicking a habit and was doing all of that and is now saying, now I'm myself, I'm like, you were like more helpful than Oliver was at times, Roy. And you were in the middle of a withdrawal. So. It's true. He still, like, gave valuable information and all of that stuff. Yep. The rich and mighty, thank you. But imagine all the China cat snow flame could deal for Roy to have to stop. You're not going to sell me on it. You're not going to sell <laughs> me. As great as the names are and as great as it is when Roy says China cat, which I know he did in those, like, few issues. <laughs> this punch, I do have to say, like, as unhealthy as it is, it's satisfying like as as problematic and as like this is just not this is not good this is not a good scene but still <laughs> yeah it's just also earned also why is hal coming to his defense here can we why because they're friends i almost did air quotes i need to contain myself they are friends. <laughs> i pulled them back i pulled them back down to friends <laughs> they're friends they're friends Roy, that's not fair. It's completely no. fair. He's literally just saying, what happened? I only made it with some help from my friends, Hal and Dinah, when you turned your back on me. That's literally what happened. I know. He like, I'm like, he walked out. He left you on the floor. Like, <laughs> Actually, Oliver probably could have dealt with the people behind this a lot more quickly and efficiently if he hadn't turned his back on Roy. Because he could have just asked Roy to like help him take them out and helped Roy. And then we would have been in a better situation with the both of them, but yes. it's a comic. So we need drama. So I get it. This, and we're leading up to, I think um, the end panel, which I think was an experience uh, for, <laughs> for both of us. So like, he, also the and, punch, <laughs> like that we need all of this. So it's like, we have the punch. Thanks. We have, we have all the asking, what was that for? Which is just, <laughs> Oh, I'm, Ollie, were you listening to anything that was just and said? here? Roy gives a speech that is not as good as his couch speech because it's much more after school special. It's like call it sharing, sharing it's caring. He doesn't say that, but I'm sharing a very small piece of the pain I've just gone through these past few days. It's been a couple of days, the kind of pain thousands of few kids day. are going through every day because an uncaring and unthinking society turns its back on them. And I was like, okay, I mean, the hand was already heavy. Now I'm crushed. I've been crushed by the hand. <laughs> the fact that the, it also just ends, though, with gotta go now. <laughs> he made his point. He said what he had to say. So <laughs> it goes from this to, eh, I gotta go I now. I know, because he's like, drugs are a symptom. And you, like the rest of society, attack the symptom, not the disease. But this symptom is worse than most. It maims, it pains, it dims you. It drives you to the edge of insanity and over. And one day ends your trip on a slab in the morgue with a tag around your toe. Gotta go now. <laughs> Bye. Gotta go now. <laughs> around your toe, exclamation point. Gotta go now. <laughs> That's the end of my speech. <laughs> I have things to do. Comic. <laughs> I got places to be. 
And then all of a sudden, he's like rude to Dinah for no reason. She's like, Roy's like, thanks for the hand, sister. I'm like, what is happening? But now you got to go help Green Arrow. I'm like, no, can we just give Dinah a break? I feel like she's done enough. Good luck. This woman. And we have this final panel here with Oliver in tears with the narration box. It's a very large lump of pride, which forms in the throat of Oliver Queen as his boy becomes a man. For me, it was vomit <sighs> that was in my throat when I read that. Because I was like, that is, oh, that is really bad. <laughs> really bad but it is true it's what happens okay it's like okay i get what they're going for this is supposed to be like a powerful moment for roy it's like that he went through this thing he overcame he's no longer a boy he's a man because he's overcome this like great like you know hardship on his own like men do according to oliver queen but like it's it's like presented as if we're supposed to be like a bit like from Ollie's perspective, like, yeah, that's right. And I'm kind of like, Ollie, you did nothing. Like, just you have not earned this moment of like, yeah, I'm so proud of him after I abandoned him and did nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's my boy. What a good boy. What a good a boy. <laughs> like, what a good man. <laughs> it's such a weird moment for him to be like so invested. Like, I'm like, he was gone for a month. I just, to me, it's, to me, it's atonal. I'm like, it's, again, I get it. I understand it intellectually. And like, but to me, it just comes across as at as atonal as the whole, like, I never said I was an agent of justice. It's just, it's kind of like what's happening here, because this panel would make more sense to me if, for example, he had tried to help him, but had been rejected. Yes. You yes. Know? Yeah. Like if he said, you know, I don't want your help or. You know, if he had tried to help him but wasn't able to help him or just anything, just like like a moment. Like we just mm -hmm. we didn't need that much to earn it, but mm -hmm. a moment would have been really nice. But we don't yeah. get that. So it feels weirdly empty and like it makes no sense with the rest of the story. Like you're like, I'm sorry, what just happened? Especially because we've got like the triumphant like man tears, like, you know, like... <laughs> These man tears. I also do really like that Roy gets to call him dumb. That was nice. <laughs> that was like victory for Roy, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, the the thing is though, I guess you kind of have to have this last panel because it is kind of what happens with Roy next, right? Like this is kind of his the beginning of his journey to of where we yeah, where we really it? start to like play with Roy as like you know his a, own a character. character. Yeah, yeah, and. I, if you didn't have this kind of, I guess it's meant to be like a kind of coming back together ish moment for the two of them, it would leave Ollie in not the best place. Like then you would just be like, wow, like what a jerk. What even, a though jerk. I, even though I still feel that way. Like I see what they're Me trying too. to do. Yeah. They're trying to be like, no, but he really does care. Like he, he's kind of messed up and like, maybe he, you know, he just doesn't understand this whole like kids that want to do drugs thing. He doesn't like it and it's not a good thing. So Maybe that's right. I don't know. People were saying in chat that we're not supposed to like Ollie here. And this is like, we're building it up. Like we we have to build up this moment where Ollie's kind of a jerk so that Roy maybe can like give this speech. And like, I don't know. Maybe it's a lot of things that are supposed to try to justify each other. But all I know is just the other stuff that I've read of Oliver Queen. This fits. That's all I'm going to say. No, I, um, this this lines up and for me this slots entirely in with um the self-righteous version of oliver queen that i feel is very on brand for him mm -hmm. which is someone who talks a really good game but then when things actually come close to home he has a very different reaction and like i yeah. think that i think that that's fine and i think that that works but i think that this story ends in a place where it kind of wants you to like him and it's like it, it's that la it's this last panel that's giving me that impression like you know yeah I don't know. It's it's hard to tell because it's hard to tell with some of these lines what tone you're meant to read it in. I have no idea how to read Good Boy. Like I just, <laughs> I'll never know how to do that. My goodness. Good Rich boy. and Mighty, thank you very much. Did Roy get off drugs or lose his virginity? What a weird line. <laughs> yeah, the line about him saying he's himself, that line. <laughs> I'm, I'm myself. myself. <laughs> so I've been changed. <laughs> 
So that is That's 85 amazing. and 86. And as you can see, we've got some uh, John Stewart over here with like a dead health chart. <laughs> but, which is, That's what's coming cover. next. <laughs> oh, uh, my beware God. my power. But so now you've read it. How do you feel? What do you think? Like what if when people like come and they're like, this is like an important historic, like, how do you feel about like looking at it through that lens? I feel like it's really important for Speedy for sure. Like, mm -hmm. I think for Roy, this is a very important story because it really does set him on, I think, a path of kind of going off and doing his own thing. And um, I, after reading this story, I got to say, I'm 100% there with him and I go do your own thing because I don't think this is a good way to live your life <laughs> with <laughs> Oliver Queen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I also feel like, you know, anything that's kind of talking about these hot button issues, uh, especially when we have the Comics Code Authority, that makes sense to me. But I don't know. If we're talking about, like, Green Lantern and Green Arrow, <laughs> I wouldn't say that it's super, like, important. It's not as important for them, maybe? Maybe that's a hot take. <laughs> I don't know. I... I think it's important to them just because it definitely establishes their um their relationship and that they are people who do have this kind of close relationship. Their relationship. Their close with, relationship. Yes, their friendship with each other. <laughs> but like they do have this long history together and they do go through these moments together. And I do I appreciate I mean it's really cool that Hal was there with Ollie when this yes. all went down with Roy. That is that is pretty like yeah, that is pretty momentous. Like to it's... have your pal there with you that helped you with that. It's like, I appreciate what this is trying to do. And so I do appreciate from a historical standpoint of like, we're going to try and tackle these issues, even if like, you know, ultimately you now, as always, when comics try and do this, it varies. But I, there's a, there's an earnestness to it. Even if I don't think a lot of hard traveling heroes works, I feel like there is a genuineness, especially in these issues of like, we're actually trying to like say something beyond just like drugs are bad even though that is the core thesis i mean i think like you said the stuff that we talk about with the the whole class element of it and this mm -hmm. idea of like almost the wealthy or like kind of poisoning the poor in a way is what it feels like we're kind of saying at one point is really powerful the stuff that I felt also undermined that though was at the end how they're like, and then we're going to expose you to all those judges and senators and you'll see you'll be in trouble. Well, it's and because one, we have to, we have to well, show have the system to show working. That. We have to yeah. show the system working, but also it didn't really, I'm trying to remember. We never we even like come around to show it though. So it's like, it's really empty because we say it, then we don't even see it. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice also like, cause Ollie has various periods where like he has his wealth. He doesn't have his wealth. He gives it away. Like he gets it back. But I feel like that even whether he has it or not, like it's still a relevant thing that like this is coming from like his like echelon, but like they don't really like deal with that too much. Yeah, that's this. also true. It's a missed opportunity to say like, you know, like how does Ollie feel about the fact that this guy that's like a huge, like wealthy pharmaceutical owner is the guy behind all of it because that's, that's kind of saying something it's interesting important. like that's yeah. the thing i'm like these these are interesting they have really good art i'm definitely glad that i read it but i'm not sure if i would suggest it to someone as a character piece in the way it was presented to me although i do have to say this i wouldn't say start with it <laughs> no i wouldn't say start <laughs> no. with this no. These these works are some of the ones that made me appreciate Hal more, just in general. Because I started to I started to really look into him, like and like branch out from this. Because before this, I had I'll put us side by side. I had read a um a lot of the Rebirth stuff, so that's where the whole like Hal is the greatest Green Lantern, and he's perfect, and da 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 da. But like reading through like the more flawed Hal and then going back to like super klutz Hal and stuff like it made me appreciate him a lot more whereas I hadn't read a lot of Green Arrow before this and right. I was just like I'm I'm annoyed and again I like I, I like reading Green Arrow I think he's an interesting character but like the thing is again it's all how people present things to you like the 
Percy presented this to me was like, you will love Green Arrow after this. <laughs> like, right. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It kind of makes me think of like when I when I read the Hawkeye, the Matt Fraction run, mm. um, it was presented to me as like a comic that would like, like lift me up. Like I was looking for something that would like kind of just like boost my spirits to read. Mm -hmm. And it did that. But if someone had said to me, like, oh, this is the comic, like, you're going to walk away from this comic and you're going to be like, oh, like, I mean, I do think Hawkeye is super cool in it, but mm -hmm. like, you're going to think like Hawkeye is like the best. Like, you're going to be like, yeah, Hawkeye is like the best hero I've ever seen. I wouldn't have said that because I feel like even that comic has some rough edges <laughs> and it's still it's still kinder than this is. It's just, it's amazing yeah. that, and that's why I like to talk about it on the channel. Like, it's amazing how you, what you're coming to it with can impact the reaction that you have to it. That's why when people suggest things to me now, I'm like, don't, don't, don't tell me what, no, just, just let it happen. Just let it happen. Doug, thank you very much. Nice to see some of the top 10 nerd gang together again. New <laughs> improved looser format. <laughs> Yes, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> we're live. That's something that people always say to me. Uh, well, not not everyone, but mm -hmm. uh, there was someone that came into my live stream a while ago, and they were like, "Say the videos like you do on Top Ten Nerd. You sound different." And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm not reading a script that I wrote. I'm just talking it's, about comics." It's off so of different. My brain. It alters your cadence so much. Like even when yeah, you try and be spontaneous and like ad lib, the fact that it's there, like coming, it's just the way you read is different than how you speak. Just well, and you're like different. You're like standing up. You're like in front of the camera mm -hmm. with like lights, and it's like I mean I have lights here, but I'm like sitting down and I'm chilling, so I'm just like casually talking about stuff. But yeah, they were saying like I don't sound excited, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I think I sound pretty excited, but I'm always conscious with a teleprompter to try not to yell. That's the thing. Like when oh. I was, when I was just like, don't yell. Like the camera's far back, but the mic can hear you. <laughs> like, you yeah. I, do you think that that might come from studio days actually? Because I feel like because the mic is further, I always am super conscientious when I'm in the studio. Oh, a hundred, a hundred percent. Because high, like so. the mic's like all the way up there, it's and it's just high. like you feel like it can't possibly be hearing you. Like even on a subconscious level, you're just like, there's yeah. no way. There's no also, way the mic hears me. <laughs> when we get excited, I mean, I get excited and I yell. And I oh, I do to too. I read a letter list. today uh, for a video, and I realized as I was editing that I was yelling, but it was such a good letter. It was like a person from the '60s who wrote a letter that was essentially print this, you cowards, about how much they hated the story. And I was just like, I love everything about this letter so much. Was was there a response to it or was yes. it yes those are my yes. favorites <laughs> they like oh argued gosh. like with the person i'm like i love this everything about this is fantastic it's so good i love when people do that and they're like i bet you won't print this letter and then i'm like oh they will and get ready because you're you're probably going to be crying in a second you're going to get some like some sad you're get back. slapped yeah <laughs> The Rich and Mighty, thank you very much. Green Arrow is the socialist version of Booster Gold. Fun, kind of a good friend, but a major arsehole. <laughs> That's an interesting yeah. take on Green Arrow. And speaking mm. of Booster Gold, we're supposed to get some more Booster Gold on screen in a, in a little bit. So when is we'll that coming see. out? The live action? Yeah, we're supposed to do live action. You know, they keep they keep saying, and this time it's supposed to happen for real days. Right? It's a show, right? <laughs> What yes, this show? one. Yes, it's a show. Yes, I think the Booster Gold is a show. I don't know. Where are we getting that now? Really? They keep saying like I keep getting people messaging me. They're like they're they're casting him and stuff, and I'm like I trust nothing oh, until I'm watching it, man. <laughs> believe it when it's in front of my eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. That's like everyone's like, what do you think about like what's going to happen with this? I'm like I don't know. We there's so much that has to happen first. Like I don't <laughs> know. Like I need to. Superman has to happen. I just want Peacemaker season two. I'm gonna have to wait so long. I mean, I'm gonna get Waller, which. That's fine. I'm 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 like cool with that, but I just wanted Peacemaker season two, and now we got to do a million things first. And I'm like, oh, I have to wait so long. Although the script is apparently done for Peacemaker season two, James Gunn confirmed that. So mm -hmm. hopefully we won't have to wait too long because you know I only have so much time left. I'm gonna die before all of this <laughs> before all of these things released. <laughs> you know, but when they're like, here's like a 20 year plan, I'm like, I'll be dead. Well. <laughs> It's the like, earth will have turned into a crisp. <laughs> we won't be I dead. hate like looking back and like be like, oh, here's a review. And it's like from two, three years ago. I'm like, this makes me feel ancient. Like all of yeah. these, like how long things are taking and how long it's been going on. It just makes me feel like, no, I don't, I don't appreciate. 
Oh, uh, someone asked me this today in my Q and A stream, and I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you. Um, do you think that Marvel will ever have something that is at the level of Endgame or above again? Hmm. I'm not sure. That's a hard question because it's like that was such a cultural phenomenon that took years to build up. I'm like, I can see other superhero like cultural phenomenons arising, but I don't know if it will be like that in that same like generational shared universe, you know, kind of way. I'm like, I'm not going to dismiss it. It could happen, but it's like at the moment with the way things are going and how fractured and fragmented everything is, it's kind of hard to conceive of you know? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I want to be hopeful and be like, yes. But I also was like, I don't know how to like even respond to that. Cause I was like, I need to like, like re realign my brain first to imagine it in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I think it is possible, but not right now. Like I, I think we need to slow down, but I think we are doing that. So hopefully that will be good. I don't know. I, I think superhero fatigue is uh real for a lot of people. So by Bob Iger apparently doesn't think it's real, but <laughs> I think it's real. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. I'm just having like keeping up with everything fatigue. Like just life. <laughs> so many things. I know it's, that's the thing. You know, what's weird though. I feel like when I'm, when I'm doing reactions or when I'm doing mm -hmm. reviews or whatever, it's like, there's like a month where I'm like, I need to like watch like three shows. Like there's three movies coming out. I have to do all of this. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have like a month where like nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, what will I talk about this month? And I'm like, I guess whatever I want, whatever I want. <laughs> old, <laughs> like I'm go into the the stuff I didn't have time to talk about before, I guess. But yeah, it's why is it all at once? I, it's something about the quarters, I guess, and the way that things are released. I'm just it's, noticing the more I do content on it that it's like a pattern. It's like I I jumped off of like the topical uh, content train and it's like anytime I try and jump back on I remember why I jumped off I'm just like it's it's too much and just I get so sucked into random rabbit holes and stuff that I'm like I just can't like a lot of the new stuff is interesting and I am interested in it but it's just that I'm like oh look like this biography about this like 1960s person that I spent like all afternoon reading like let's talk about that even though no one cares but <laughs> yeah but I think we have to talk about the things I think people care people in chat you care you care about these random things that <laughs> sasha's talking about right because i personally feel like i don't know sometimes that's when you find you find weird things sometimes that people do care about and it's more important for us to feed the stuff that we want to talk about first and then you know trends and we have to care about trends but look see everyone's saying they care look at this <laughs> everyone's like i care see there, it's there you go like, i just because for me it's i always like to try and make the type of content that I just find enjoyable to watch and hope that other people also find it enjoyable. And one of the things I love about fandom is just like the random things you find. Like that's, yeah. that's my I favorite mean, part about comics is discovering all of the different things that are out there. We've talked about this before, but like one of my favorite things, I took a year off last year from collecting the big two. Mm -hmm. So um, Dylan and I did that together and it was our new year's resolution. And we succeeded. Mm -hmm. There were some exceptions. We each got to keep one book from the mm -hmm. big two. And then we got to do, uh, like if I was doing something that was like, I was talking about a comic for like a, a show that I was doing with someone else or something like that. Then obviously I'm going to yeah. collect it because that just feels right to do. Um, but uh, the, the amount of indie comics that I found and so many cool things mm -hmm. and it's, just I find so many cool indie things that I'm like, no one will want to, no one cares. <laughs> do I care so much? I went on a tangent yesterday where I talked about um what was it? The Kelly Thompson series that just ended. It was like a five issue mini. It was uh Kelly Thompson. The call, the call. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. As soon as I went to look it up, it came to my brain. And I'm like going into the call. And then I was talking about Night Walkers by Colin Bunn, which was from mm -hmm. Source Point Press, which was so weird. And everyone was just like, and I kept being like, oh, but in Night Walkers this. And everyone's like, Amanda, no one cares about Night Walkers. I'm like, <laughs> I know, but I'm going to tell you anyways, because it's my stream. And I have to tell someone. <laughs> I can't just sit here with my Night Walkers thoughts by myself. I, 
my brain will explode. It'll explode. Like, yeah, it'll be like yeah. scanners, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that's the thing that I just wish people were, we could talk about more, I guess, is like, yeah, there's a lot of cool things that I find all the time, but I'm just like, I don't know if, I don't know if this is like worth the whole video. It's one of those things where it's like when you do do it, you just have to accept that it's going to be one of the ones that's a bit lesser on the engagement scale. And it's just then you yeah. have to play that game of like, okay, like if I do this one Pick for and me, choose. like how many yeah. of the more, you know, trending ones will I have to make up for it? You know, yeah. kind of thing. Not that the trending ones aren't also for us because like- It's true. Like that's I also interesting love too. About trendy stuff. <laughs> yeah. But there are times when I'm like, I really just want to talk about this like little book. Like I really just want to tell everyone about how much I love Twig and how everyone should read Twig. Twig is great. I love Twig. It was so sweet. It was so good. Twig we is such do, a fun book. We should do a stream. No one will come maybe, but we should just <laughs> talk about Twig. It's so good. And I think they're going to do a second volume of it. And I really want to do a Twig cosplay. Oh, that would be Where fun. I'm Twig and uh, I'm going to have Dylan be uh, Splat. Mm -hmm. uh and i'm just like oh gosh it's such a good book there's so many little things like that though and they just like slip through the cracks and like no one like i'm reading no through joshua williamson's uh birthright and that one oh is, i love birthright so much it's so i've heard fun. it's really good i haven't it's... i haven't read it but um dylan is collecting it mm -hmm. yeah like that one's really fun and then on the big two side i'm picking up on that like um batman first night and it's like yeah it's another like black label like it's batman's first night like time but it's like set in like oh, the 1930s yeah. and Ooh. i really like it it's really cool and they've done a lot to try and make it feel like era specific and the art oh. is just gorgeous and that's I'm like one it. of the things i want to get back into is fantastic four the ryan north fantastic four that's going mm. on right now because apparently they're having time travel shenanigans i heard they are and i was like indeed. I love time travel shenanigans. I also really love Ryan North. And I'm just like, I feel like that's a dream team. I read it's it before like, I left. And then I left for a year. So it's like, I, I'm i okay with Ryan North's Fantastic Four. It doesn't have enough melodrama. It's fun. Okay. Like when he when he gave his thesis at the beginning, he was very clear. He was like, we're going to have was. fun. And I'm like, yes, this is fun. But I like a tiny dash of angst for the Fantastic yeah, Four. Like some that's of it, fair. Like, some of it's there but it doesn't quite reach like you know how angsty they can get like there's a certain like oh level. <laughs> they can get the most the fantastic four it can be like the most angsty family you've ever read in your life 100 percent. so it's like it, it franklin has some, dying his hair black excuse me it has some like emotional moments for sure but it's just it never fully goes because it's trying it's trying to be more like yeah we're like we're more fun like family shenanigans i'm like that's yeah. that's fun but it's more you know it it's a little it's too much fun, run. is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's too much. Fair. <laughs> fair, fair. I'm actually trying to figure out right now what like I want to like collect for DC because I feel like I don't have enough mm. DC books. I have like Nightwing, but I might stop because Tom Taylor is going to be gone and I don't know what we're going to do next. So I'm mm. waiting to see what happens. And then Titans, mm -hmm. obviously. And then Wonder Woman. And then I'm just like, I'm looking though at my, you know, my pull list and I'm yeah. like, I have so many Marvel books. Like I, this is embarrassing. Like I'm like, I feel like <laughs> I need to put, I need to put a little more DC on this. Cause this is feeling like I'm really leaning one way. And I don't, I feel like that's not fair because I feel like DC is also doing a lot of cool stuff right now. I find and, that I do the same thing, but the opposite way. We need to like balance mm -hmm. each other out. Yeah, <laughs> we need to balance each other out. Well, it's because also though, because of all the X-Men stuff, I feel like, cause I'm reading a lot of X-Men. Mm. And I know that the X-Men for you hasn't been your favorite thing. Yeah, it hasn't been exactly my cup of tea of late. So I've definitely, and I hopped on Dawn of DC hard. So yeah. like when they're like, we're rebooting, I'm like, heck yeah, you are. Because I'm one of those people. <laughs> I'm like, I'll try all the things. I heard they're also maybe doing something. I don't know if this is true. I heard a rumor that they might be doing Ultimate in like dc like dc might be doing kind of an ultimate inspired thing that rumor keeps floating around i have no idea how like legit it is or not and all i, I don't keep, know all i keep thinking is like but they already do elseworlds and black label and like so many other things like dc does not have a problem with having like alternate they don't years. need another world yeah they already got a lot yeah i know i was they like so i would kind of be down for that as long as it's something that's like different obviously than ultimate but like i think that would be fine but i was also like but also is this just a rumor like i'm just wondering if it's about like dc needing to copy marvel or something because i'm just <laughs> like i don't think that they need to have an ultimate like like marvel 
I think is trying to do it to bring new people in again. Yes. Just like they did the first. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I also think it'll work because I think so far what I've seen of the ultimate stuff, it's been really good. Um, Other than apparently some people I've, I'm hearing mixed. I heard everyone loved X-Men and I love Mm X-Men, but then people, we were talking in chat last night and some folks were like, I feel like X-Men's really confusing. And I was like, I haven't read it yet. I want to. It's really good. It's really good. I, I really love Peach Momoko, though. So and mm, I've been I following like, yeah. And have you did you read like Demon Days and Demon Wars and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, then you'll probably like it. I said to people, I was like, I think go back and read Demon Days. And like, if you get into Demon Days and you like it, I'm like, I think this will make more sense. But if you're just coming in like cold, just to Ultimate X-Men, it's very different. So yeah, I've like, heard some people say that they feel it's too manga-esque. Like it's uh, it's pushed too far into like a different realm that they don't feel it's x Men, and i'm like well i'll like i'll yeah. read it and see like how i feel because i have been reading the the ultimate stuff and that's been fun yeah yeah i mean that's basically what people were saying like it's not x-men enough like where's the x-men and i'm like well i think they're coming like it's issue- <laughs> like let's let's wait and see i like how it's also kind of you know this is like a world where it almost seems like the x-men don't exist so i think what we're going to be seeing is like my theory is I think we're going to be seeing the origin of the X-Men in this mm. new ultimate universe and they will show up, but we're going to be following one person to meet everybody because that also seems like a story structure based on other Peach Momoko stuff mm-hmm. that Momoko likes. So we'll probably follow the main character and then along the way we'll meet a cool cast of wacky characters and then we'll get the X-Men or some strange Va- variation of, of some variation. I like when um, the alternate universes go really hard in a different direction. That's why I liked Tangent when the Tangent universe was around because that just went hard into like they have the same names and pretty much nothing else. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It's like I also liked when I talked. I talked to, uh, or I didn't talk to Peach about this. I did. I did get to meet Peach. She's so mm-hmm. sweet. But um, I was listening to an interview where she was talking about how when she like builds these worlds. Uh, people will be like, oh, I loved this character who was like this character. And then she's like, oh, that's not who that is. <laughs> like, she's uh-huh. like, It's so interesting to hear what people think because sometimes people have an idea of who a character is and it's like, that's not even like who they are. And mm-hmm. sometimes they're based on a totally different character and sometimes they're not based on anyone. They're just a character. Mm-hmm. But like, that's it. They're not like, that's not Black Widow. It's just a character, you know? It's like, I'm like, that's so cool. Like, I, I, I think I love that. I just think it's so weird. I love how weird it is. And I love how scary it is. Ultimate X-Men. That's no, what I'll I love. Say. Like, I love the uh, just, I don't know. I like when people try new things. Like, even yeah. if they don't, even if they don't work or land for me, I always appreciate when I can see that. I'm like, you know what? You tried. And at the very least, I appreciate that. <laughs> and at, or at the very least, hopefully it's interesting. For me, the worst thing is just boring and uninteresting. Yeah, like, we have so many comics that are the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I also am like, if it's different, I'll, I'm curious. Doesn't mean I'll like it, but at least mm-hmm. like you're trying something new. And, no, you know, we still need to have the old same as well. But you need both, I think. No, it's like, especially when you read as much as we do, because it's like, because yeah. I'm like, we definitely have a skewed perspective. I'm like, I always bear that in <laughs> mind when I'm looking at stuff, because I'm like, I've read a lot of things. <laughs> like, There'll be times when people are like, oh, this is what's happening with this character right now. And I'm like, oh, I don't like that. And then I'm just like, okay, wait, like, maybe I should <laughs> dip a toe in, see how the water is first. Because I'll just, because I have so many preconceived ideas of things. And they'll mm-hmm. be like, oh, like now this, they're going to try something new with it. And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait a minute, who is this person? So yeah, I, I feel you. I feel like it is hard when you're that ingrained in it. And it's also hard sometimes even when I'm watching things that are different, like adaptations mm-hmm. of characters. Oh, have you watched Legion? Yes, I love Legion, actually. How have I not watched Legion? <laughs> I just found out it existed. Where have I been living under a rock, apparently? I like... My rule that I give myself because like for critiquing things is I'm like, is this coming, is this coming from my own perception? Like, is this something I don't like, or is it something that doesn't work for the story or is it both? Cause like sometimes those things can coincide with each other. Like I don't like it and it doesn't work. Or sometimes it's like, this is something that I don't like, but it actually makes total sense and like works right. for the narrative that they're going for. And I always try right. and like take a step back and look at things 
from those angles. Also, just because I find it to be an interesting thought exercise just to see like what's going on. Jurassic, thank you That's very true. much. I appreciate it. That is Matthew true. is asking tangent Joker vid when I don't know. You know where to ask me when I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Have you I watched know. Gotham Knights? No, I still haven't. I still haven't. Oh, I, I know you're looking for someone to join. We you. should do that together. I think you would be a great person to watch that show with. I've only watched the first two episodes and I did like a couple of reviews on them. And it was like kind of a thing that was like, I was kind of almost dared to do. Mm -hmm. And I was told if I don't like it, I can stop whenever. But now I kind of want to finish it. Um, what, like, like to challenge yourself? Like challenge accepted? No, I mean, like... <laughs> It's complicated. I have a lot of feelings about Gotham Knights. So Gotham Knights, when I started it, I was like, oh, this is like terrible. Uh, and I was kind of watching it like ironically and being like, oh, yeah. this is goofy. <laughs> like whatever. This is dumb. And then I kind of got invested in some of the characters a little bit. And like it is super cheesy. Like, don't get me wrong. There's definitely moments where I'm like, ugh. But also then people started telling me about like what the behind the scenes on it was like and how like a lot of it actually had to be like improvised and stuff mm -hmm. and like just general CW chaos. Yes. <laughs> if you've like read into any of the behind the scenes CW stuff, friends in chat, you know what we're talking about. Um, so yeah, and people are just telling me a little bit about like what the production was like. And it was so funny because when I started, people like my reaction to even the trailer and just talking about the show dying uh, when mm -hmm. that news first came out, people got so mad at me, like, because they were like, oh, Gotham Knights is great. Like, you just you just don't understand. And then I started <laughs> watching it and I was like, OK, but wait, go to like my episode two review because I think I'm starting to understand. And people say, actually, as it goes, it gets like a lot better. So like if you I get to like, the end. I like I feel like, you know, it's like whenever people say they really love or hate something, I always get slightly tense just because I'm like, mm, am I gonna have the exact opposite reaction? This feels Maybe. like I'm heading into like territory where I'm gonna be that person who's like, Ugh, not my whatever, whatever. <laughs> I don't know if you'll love or hate it. But I think that you will enjoy the experience is what I would say to you. <laughs> I think the experience will be interesting. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. it's always more fun to do those things with other people because yes. it's just there's always a moment where you just wish you had somebody to tell it to and like it can't always be like for me kevin like you know i'm just like i can't always bother <laughs> like, like, kevin. <laughs> kevin i have to tell you about gotham Knights. <laughs> like stop <laughs> everything <laughs> i have to tell you about the joker's daughter I'll sit down <laughs> batman's adopted son yeah, mm. it's very um, it's very teen drama as well, which mm. that's the part well, I mean, that that's, I feel like... that's on par for the CW, especially in the yeah. late, latter era where they lent more and more and more into that. Yeah, more and more into the teen yeah. drama. It's I don't know. I also haven't watched Star Girl though, and I heard that's good. But I like I'm obsessed with Star Girl. Like yeah. I like I stand Star Girl. I love Star. I like everybody who's like been around here. Like the chat knows. Like I'm just like, hey, it's Star Everyone Girl. Has told me. <laughs> Everyone has told me which, like, everyone has said Stargirl is, like, really good. And everyone I talk to about it, that I'm like, oh, I haven't seen it yet. They're like, oh, my gosh, no, it's the best. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I need to, like, watch Stargirl. Apparently, it's great. Also, I love how Claudia is asking Batman's adopted son, which one? The one that doesn't exist. Yes, exactly. The made-up one for Gotham Knights. The one we made up for Gotham Knights. But who actually over time, I think I'm coming to like, I'm not sure. I don't know how I feel about it. And then I feel conflicted because I'm like, I shouldn't like this. And then I'm like, do I like this right now? I'm not sure what's happening. Yeah. What's well, his name? He's got a weird like, name too. I don't hate Titans, like um, the live action Titans. And there is a huge contingent of people who are like, Titans is the worst show ever made. And I'm like, I don't hate Titans. <laughs> I genuinely I auditioned don't. for Titans. Oh, so, really? Yeah. And I know people that work on it. So I... I mean, I haven't been cast in it, so I, I don't like that part. I wish they would cast <laughs> me. That would have been great. Um, but I feel like from what I've heard, it is better the more you go into it. So it is like it's I, I've struggled. I tried to watch it, but I couldn't get past like episode two. Was it, the, was it like the terrible wigs and just like stuff that everybody has? It's just like everyone being like so like really melodramatic is what it felt like to me. Like everyone was like, "This is like this it's thing." It's so and I'm like, grit. It's like it's so it's like, like, calm like down. It's, it's dark and we lit it all dark and we're doing like we turned down like all of this stuff. To but then it look it's also one of those shows where you're like, I can't see what's happening. Like, <laughs> there's probably a good reason you can't see dark. what's happening. 
<laughs> Portland. <laughs> Probably true. Especially in those earlier seasons. seasons, maybe when yes. they had less money. Sometimes yeah. you don't want to see what's happening. <laughs> oh my gosh, Christopher saying, Amanda, please play the game instead of watching the show. I will play the game at some point when I <laughs> when the time is right. I will. I want to play Gotham Knights. I hear it's not good, but I hear it got better. One day. Uh Gosh, you know what I played that was totally unnecessary? I was doing a do deep that? dive on uh, the Batman, and I found that old Flash game that they made for it, and I dug it out, and I played <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. It's How was like, it? You know, it's like, for what it is, it's fine. It's super simple. You just go through levels with, like, some basic, like, jump, shoot a battering, punch kick, and you fight uh, the Penguin and the P Kabuki Twins. Yeah. And it just has a very loose story. You've got five lives. You got to do the entire thing in five lives. But I'm like, you know what? For like a little tie in game, like it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. I have been playing um, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Mm. How, how, how has your experience been with that? <laughs> uh, I'm actually really enjoying it. And mm. I don't know what that says about me <laughs> as a person, as a gamer. I'm not sure. But also, I feel like a lot of the things that bothered people about it, like I wasn't inherently bothered by mm. um, at the beginning. Like a lot of the main things I heard was, you know, Batman dying. People weren't happy about that. People just also weren't happy about the Justice League dying. Um, and then obviously the game elements, the live service components. Um, uh, and you find it chaotic to look at. Shooter. Um, I find it really hard to look at. Like that's what's kept yeah. me away. It's just like all of the stuff on the screen. I find it difficult, like visual, you know, visually. I sometimes don't know what I'm doing, but as <laughs> people will sometimes tell me in chat, it's because apparently I don't read enough for what I'm supposed to be doing, but <laughs> I think I read it. And sometimes I just don't understand what the instructions are telling me for the mission. And it is a lot visually. And there are times when I don't know where things are because I get like confused. Mm -hmm. But the actual just like running around and like looting and shooting and just like shooting the bad guys and zipping around the city. All that stuff is pretty fun. And I, I so far, the story is like mid is what I would say. Like the mm -hmm. writing, like I think the story overall, I don't mind that. But the writing is mid. Like the parts where they're like, this is funny. I'm like, is it though? <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of like, oh, I smiled, you know, but I didn't like laugh out loud mm -hmm. or anything like that. And yeah, I do think it's a shame that it's a live service game as well. I would have rather it's just like a fun game where we run around and it's just a story. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'll ever play it live service. I will say that. But it's I'm also not a big live service looter shooter gal. So yeah, I'm not know. a huge like looter sh shooter person in general. So I was just like from yeah. the start, I was like, this is probably something. If I look into it, I'll be looking at other people. Like, I mean, I think doing Borderlands it. kind of has like looter shooter elements in it, and I like that game. Like mm -hmm. I like Borderlands and that series, but that is also like I'd rather do a looter shooter where I'm not like it's not like online. I don't mm -hmm. know that part. The skins are also really cool. Like I really like the outfits. I think I like the design the most for the game. That's my favorite part of it. It's just how it like how they designed and also like, you know, going around Metropolis and all that stuff. That's pretty cool. But even the riddles like are kind of not good. So it's like I keep wanting to play it, but I'm also mm. just like I'm kind of addicted to it low key. <laughs> but I'm also then when I think about like what it is and people are like, what do you like about it? I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> So it's like whenever they do like the dwindling service numbers, it's like that's you. It's like you're still there. It's like you're the diehard like people. <laughs> Except that I, well, I mean, I guess I have to play live because that's the other thing. You can't even play offline. So I guess, yeah, mm. I am one of those numbers. I'm the dwindling numbers. <laughs> I'm going to be playing it again. Uh, what's uh, tomorrow? Actually, Friday is my fatal Friday. Oh, nice. So uh, I've been doing that because I just want to get through the story so I can review it mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, but I usually do that or I do Mortal Kombat 1. And I was playing Peacemaker, but apparently mm -hmm. he just got nerfed. So <laughs> he's not as powerful as he once was. Also, I just don't think he's as fun as Omni-Man, to be honest. I, I really enjoyed playing Omni-Man. Also, Omni-Man's butt looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> they gave the cake that the gamers demanded. Is that... <laughs> He got the cake. I was like, I didn't even know. I was like, I'm sorry, Nolan. I didn't know you had that cake. <laughs> It's new to me. I was like, wow. It's an having Easter an awakening. <laughs> it, was, it was the Easter egg of Invincible. <laughs> oh, good oh. lord. Oh my gosh, yes. One of 12 people playing. Yes. <laughs> 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 
me and 11 other people that are still playing. Yeah, the numbers have dwindled apparently so bad. And then apparently Warner Brothers also just said that apparently that's what they want to do more of. Yes. Yeah, I heard that announcement. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know what? We need more of live service games. And like, I understand the monetary appeal of the idea of the live service game and the forever game that people just keep playing and paying for forever. The logistics of it are quite different. So <laughs> It's like we can only have so many of those games in our lives is the thing that I feel like people don't seem to be understanding. And the amount of work that you have to put in to build a game that's going to build you a sustainable audience throughout. So when other mm -hmm. live service games come out, I say, no, I'm sticking with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Like that that's really hard to do and well, it's because also you only have so much it. time like you yeah. only have so much time to play games in the day like yeah it's limited it's like I, it's also just bizarre because i mean hogwarts legacy was insanely successful so and that mm -hmm. is not a live service game so it's like no i loved their statement what? though where they were like but what if it was and i'm like but what if it was <laughs> like this? but what if it was but what if we killed the thing that was good like um okay <laughs> but also like why would you even want that like who do who wants that game who's gonna play that game like i mean somebody i mean there, there's somebody out there who'll play anything i mean <laughs> i mean i'll play it because i have to i'll play it for the people but i don't know if i'll play it and enjoy it that'll but then again i said that about kill the justice league and here i am <laughs> and I, now you're I still am, playing it i'm having fun i'm not gonna lie you know what it is it's i think it's also the combat that's really fun like it's just like zipping around and i'm playing as harley quinn and you get mm -hmm. you get the little bat drone you gotta like zip around the city it's mm -hmm. i it reminds me of black widow and marvel's avengers who i also liked playing and i mm -hmm. also did play marvel's avengers and was one of the people that i thought it was fine i was like it's fine it's fun <laughs> maybe no one should trust me for a game this is maybe that's what we're learning here don't listen I'm to playing amanda control so i'm like i'm not even playing anything recent so. oh yeah okay i haven't played control yet have you played alan wake yeah i have i mean alan wake too i have i like yeah. my computer struggled through it because i don't oh. have like you know the the greatest you know for all of the the shine and the sheen coming off of all the things but like i enjoyed it yeah it was uh i haven't finished it yet uh, because I had to take a break to play Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Which also, thank you, Michael, for getting th that for me off my wish list. I appreciate you. <laughs> so I didn't have to pay with my own money. Um, but uh, yeah, I still have to finish it. But I haven't played Control. And people were like, oh, it, like, have you played Control? It like adds so much. And I, I, I I've seen all the things that refer to it. And then I'm like, man, I should really play Control. It also, it just I sounds enjoy cool. Control, like, but, but also, like, I, like, I like the lore aspects of it. That is something I like. I love having to go around, like, you find all the tape recorders and the videos and the notes. And it's just, like, building all of, like, this huge world. And it's got, like, the SCP vibes and the X-Files vibes and all those things. And I really like that. So Yeah, I love the way it's built. I love the just the trying to solve all these like little like mysteries and i love reading everything and alan wake is I such a too. good game if you love to read like it's like yeah it is and that's why i feel like it's like even though i have seen some people stream it it's not the best streaming game not just because its specs are insane but also because like it's a lot of like stopping and reading and depending upon like your audience they might not be as into that or not it just totally depends and not everybody wants to oh, sit yeah. there and watch you read like 80 pages of something <laughs> i try to do like little voices or something when i'm reading but yeah that's one of those things where I, i'm always conscious of that and i'm like oh should i maybe like not be reading right now but then i'm like no i love to read so if you're here and if you're in my stream you should know how much i love to read and so you should be here for me reading and when i do like when i'm playing hogwarts legacy i read everything and like mm -hmm. anything that i read i do a british accent for so i try yes. to make it at least fun for people but yeah i thought about that a while ago and then i was like i'm not gonna apologize to you guys for reading i'm just gonna do it's it good no it's good because like them. then you don't get in your own head because that can happen with streaming sometimes where you become oh yeah hyper aware that you're streaming and so then sometimes that can lead to a bit of like awkwardness because like there's part of your brain that's streaming and there's part of your brain that's thinking about the fact that you're streaming and like there's it's a very you know interesting tightrope to walk uh yeah it's also hard like when i play uh suicide squad when i'm like in the middle of a mission like i literally i'm so, i cannot look at chat like i'm like so focused on the mission like mm -hmm. i'm like i'll check you guys i'll be back in like let me just do this for 10 minutes and then i'll be right back with you and sometimes mm -hmm. people in chat are like 
why aren't you responding to me? And I'm like, I gotta play this game. I can't look at both. I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone was saying to me the other day, they're like, ah, you can't multitask, I see. And I was like, well, I mean, I can, but not when I'm in the middle of trying to aim <laughs> weapons at people. That's hard to do. Uh, who was I saying? I was saying, I think Markiplier did something. Oh, I was saying Markiplier has had moments where he's like, look, I just need to focus on what I'm doing right now. So I'm not going to talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so if you're saying that I'm in the same level as Markiplier, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think I've succeeded. It's like, I'm enjoying going through the comics live and I want to do more of it, but that is something that I'm still finding that balance of like, you know, paying attention to chat and also not just falling into the comic entirely because like, if I could just read everything, like all the pages. Yeah. Like, I'll just read it. this comic. Yeah. I feel like it's, that's the other thing that's hard. I, when I do my comic book clubs, I sometimes struggle with like, what is the right balance i try to make it i think the way that i try to break it up is like if i get through like a scene then i'll maybe like pop in to be like mm -hmm. what's up and then say a few things and then back into the anyways back to the story um but yeah it's also hard because then then i guess the question is like is that what people even want like do they want do they want us to break the flow and talk to them no it depends on what era the comics from because the paneling can be very different depending upon what area you're reading and that can make the flow of action quite different, different. like looking yeah. at like a silver age comic even looking at this like a 70s like bronze age early bronze age comic is different than looking at a comic from like the 2020s or something they're just laid out entirely differently that's true yeah yeah i don't know i definitely think it's fun though i think you should do more I love it. comic stuff because no i, mean, I, I no, love you it. do all comic stuff but i mean you should <laughs> uh do more yeah go just going through comics because it's fun there's one i want to look at when i was um i was going through an episode of brave and the bold and i found all of these world's finest comics and one of them actually made me tear up a little bit and i was like you know what i i think i need to cause an oh. emotional response <laughs> i'm curious i feel like i have an idea about like what it might be but is it wait, what era is it from we are in the 19 we're in the 1950s oh no that's not where i was going <laughs> in my brain i was going to a totally it different place me. i don't know maybe i was just in the like, 1950s really made you tear up maybe i was really emotional that day i don't know <laughs> oh. Oh, also, are you wearing your Call of Cthulhu dress? Yes, I am. <laughs> or your or your Cthulhu dress. Sorry, Call of Cthulhu, wearing Cthulhu is a dress. <laughs> TTRPG game. And I'm wearing my Stranger Things. Nice. So we're both wearing black milk today. <laughs> unintentionally. Yes. Not I'm sponsored. Obsessed. I'm obsessed wish. with this dress. Like, since I got it, I even wore it to um pick my daughter up today. So I was oh, nice. that mom in a Cthulhu dress, but it was fine. <laughs> So you were the coolest mom. That's what you're saying. I the like to tell mom. myself that. I'm sure at some point I'll be the embarrassing mom, but it's fine. <laughs> I mean, at some point, I think, you know, all moms are the embarrassing mom. I think that is just, unfortunately, that's just the it's way it'll the, go. It's the way. It's the way of the world. You know, it's the way of the world. It doesn't matter how cool you are. You're always going to embarrass someone at some point. But to be fair, I think everyone in life is embarrassing at some point so you know oh, it's, it's a, true. an experience we all have to deal with no i was a cringe human just the other day i went to the store to get a birthday gift and i was also buying like wine for the party and everything and then the cashier was like birthday and i was like oh yes i'm getting this gift for my friend da, 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 da. and she was like no i meant your birthday for, to card you and i was like oh um oh <laughs> but so i also but I also feel like getting carded would not be what you would expect. I, you know, I mean, it always someone, surprises me I would when, be surprised. It, when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised when it happens. I, I'm always like, who, me? Oh, okay. All right. Oh. It's like an accomplishment sometimes. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, achievement unlocked. Was not expecting that. <laughs> um, Rebecca is saying my mom was always the cool mom. Oh, that's, that's so nice. nice. That's such a that's nice so sentiment. Nice. <laughs> Well, there you go. Maybe you'll be like Rebecca's mom and you'll That's always the be dream. the cool mom. Yeah. That's the dream. <laughs> yeah, I would say my mom was always the cool mom. I don't think she ever really embarrassed me. I never was embarrassed by my mom, but I also never thought she was cool. I just always liked her. But I just never, like, never oh, thought she was right. cool either. 
Yeah, see, I thought my mom was cool. My mom got her belly button pierced. And it was at a time when I wanted my belly button pierced. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you can't have it pierced because you're too young. But I'm going to go get mine pierced. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's so mean. But also, that's so cool. <laughs> like, I was like, and then it came time for me to be like of age that I could get my belly button pierced. My mom was like, do you want your belly button pierced? And I was like, no, I'm over it. You were right. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> that's the thing like um my eldest wants a tattoo and i'm like when you get to be of age if you still want it we can go together and i've left a space and I'm like we can do matching ones we can do the whole thing if you still want it when you're like that age but you gotta get there yeah. first so yeah you gotta get there first it's a little it's a little early to be getting a tattoo yes sure. <laughs> yeah 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 my mom actually just got a tattoo as well and i was like, oh really yeah and she was always like i don't know if i could ever get a tattoo she's like it just seems uncomfortable and i'm like you've had children I, think. <laughs> I was like i'm pretty sure you can literally do anything like you're literally a superhero like you made life so i think you could say she's like is it painful and i was like not as painful as anything else that you've probably experienced that's what i'll tell you like it is it not on where but like i, I don't yeah. know i didn't find it overly painful like, I mean, the one on my thigh was really painful. Like I have like the one that's like on my thigh that's at the back mm -hmm. a little bit because it's mm -hmm. just on the side. That was the worst one. But I have I mean, I have like a snake on my ribs and people always think that must have been really painful because it's your ribs. Mm -hmm. And that one I didn't mind. I fell asleep. I thought I was I felt like I was being tickled when they were doing this part up here because I could feel mm -hmm. it in my armpit. Uh and the one that was at the back of my thigh, though, it was, I think it's because my hamstrings are really tight, like naturally. Mm -hmm. And the skin is also, I think, thinner back here or something. And I really want to get the backs of my thighs tattooed, but I don't know if I can sit for it now. Like, I was like, now I'm scared. My tattoo artist was like, you could sit. If you want to sit, you'll sit. He's like, I believe in you. He's like, we can numb you. And I'm like, like <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared. I want to get more, but like I've allocated very specific like limbs. I'm like, it can only be this arm and like it can only be like this one spot. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like you also have to be careful because like I always think I don't want to be covered. So then I'm yeah. just like, I, there will be a time where I'll be like, I'm out of the space that I have allotted for this. No, I like, I have, I'm like one arm, like the winter soldier or like cable or like, you know, something. <laughs> yeah yeah you, you just have like a one full arm and then you're like that's the arm is full i'm done do you as yours are only on your one arm right only on the one arm currently yeah. like we'll currently. we'll see how it we'll see how it ends up going could spread at any time everybody's always like you should get like a dc one and i'm like no like <laughs> no i, I love them but not not my body forever <laughs> so. i've thought about getting a superhero tattoo which one would you I get i don't know i was well you know i was thinking about getting okay this is embarrassing so chat shush don't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> all 200 and something of you shush keep my secrets uh but i was actually thinking of getting a harley quinn tattoo okay what uh, era uh, well, I was thinking of getting, she has in the movies, obviously she has a bunch of tattoos mm -hmm. and she has the one that says lucky you that's like on her abdomen. Mm -hmm. And I don't exactly want that. Cause that's a bit much for me. <laughs> that's a, quite a bold statement, but I was just thinking of getting it like just on my hip, like a, just a little one, like over mm -hmm. here. Um, so that was one I was thinking of getting, but then I don't know. I was also kind of thinking like something Wonder Woman could be cool. It's funny mm. how I'm so ingrained in X-Men and like most people when they come into my streams are like, can we talk about the X-Men? And I love the X-Men, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I want DC tattoos. Like <laughs> it's the iconography. Like they're more iconic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're just more iconic. I was thinking of something from Wonder Woman Historia mm. And finding like something in there that I could do that maybe is like inspired by that artwork from the, the art first is issue. very pretty, especially the like it the is. mosaic styling of it is really and nice. gosh, Wonder Woman Historia just like made me cry so much. Like, I, I still haven't read it. Like, I still I know I that was one of the things that I was like, <laughs> one of the things that I was I was thinking of giving to you for when we're on my stream was I was really tempted to give you Wonder Woman Historia. Well, I'm glad but, we're starting with Wolverine. I'm excited for Wolverine, Wolverine. is going to be fun. <laughs> Wolverine is going to be fun. But maybe we'll have to do Wonder Woman Historia at some point. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I feel like, yeah, it, it made me weep. It, it, I had a lot of feelings about it.
At least you're here weeping over like legit things. I'm here crying over like 1950s Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it moved you. It's, it can still move you in the 1950s. That's, it's very true, you know. Just I because... really thought it was going to be modern too. I was like, oh, maybe it's like this issue or this issue of World's Finest. <laughs> no, the 1950s. <laughs> Interesting. But now I'm more curious about it because I'm like, what issue was it? No, I should do it live. Like maybe I will just for fun. It's a short issue, so you know, yeah. why not? <laughs> a little short live. Now people are talking about comics that made them cry, but it's actually getting a little late and we've definitely strayed far from <laughs> Ollie and I know like that didn't make me cry. Ollie backhanding right across the face, but we definitely strayed. I mean, Ollie that. cried. Were his That's tears true. real? I don't know. They were tears you of be pride. He was proud. He was he proud was... of the thing that he had very little to do. <laughs> I'm so proud of this man that I didn't really help Create. I'm so proud of this man I neglected. It's through my neglect that he became the man he is today. I mean, in a weird way, it kind of is. It kind of is. Maybe he well, did earn those tears after all. <laughs> maybe. Chem dog, no comic has ever made me cry. Oh, no. Well, I'll do a, I'll, maybe I'll do a video and I'll talk about all the comics that have made me cry because there's too many. <laughs> And then maybe you'll find one there. I'll do a reading list of just comics that will just make you comics that cry to, forever. To read to cry. <laughs> comics, comics if comics you want to, to cry. cry too. <laughs> comics to cry too, but not on. Don't cry on your comics. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, this has been this has been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing it on your channel for Wolverine. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. It will be fun. I will, we'll figure out when we're available and yes. we can do that. Um, but yeah, Thursdays are good days for me. So uh, maybe we'll do it then. Stay tuned to find out everyone. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much chat for being here and hanging out as always. It was a good time as always. I will leave it up for those of you who missed the Ollie Hal speedy stuff at the beginning and get excited because the next video is going to have a, some very dramatic letter readings in it Ooh. if you want to check out amanda i have all of her links down below and you can go do that and you should because she's got some very fun reaction content she is consistent there's stuff every day so you should definitely go and do that thank and you also always, thank you so much for having me as well oh this it's has so been fun we've so wanted to do fun. it for like a long time so i'm glad we, we still have to talk coordinate. about that jj spider-man <laughs> i know it's gonna be like a redo of our jj spider-man yeah no, we should just go back to it i think and, I know. Yeah, it'll be Especially fun. now that it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Yes. But enjoy the rest of your day, night, evening, whatever it is, chat. And we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.